like I said, I know you folks last week I went down to the marshals because they want to have a discussion about my paperwork. What happened? Well, like I said, they, uh, you know, I filed that lawsuit. I filed it in common law and they converted it over to a, uh, a civil rights complaint. And as I know, it's a personal injury claim. So I said, how do we convert a personal injury claim over to a civil rights complaint? So I did a car accident. I'm trying to make it a complaint, you know, civil rights complaint. You know, I filed a personal injury. You know, like I said, of a standard form that they pull out on a, on a federal website and say the, um, like I say, the number's like a 360 number and a civil rights is a 440 form. I said, I didn't fill out a 440, I filled out a 360, I filled out a personal injury claim. And they said, well, you know, we, we file everything under uh, um, complaints, we don't do claims. I said, well, why do you have the option available? They said, well, nobody ever fix that one if it does title 42 1983 complaints. I said, well, I said, I don't fit with that special uh, protected class of citizens. I'm not in, in a wheelchair. And you have to be discriminated against. I told you. There's like five classes. You have to be like a uh, handicapped or a woman, uh, uh, your race, your uh, uh, sexual orientation, your religion. I said, I don't fit in any of those. So they just ran with it anyway. And <laughs> they made it a complaint. So I said uh, to the clerk of the court's office, I wrote like an order saying to bring me back over to the correct side of the court. That's a claim of consequence. I told him bring me over back over to the common law side of the court, and I told him to uh, don't practice law. You know, don't try to uh, rearrange my documents because that's practicing law without a license. So what happened? Well, the clerk of the courts don't like to be told you can't practice. They can't practice law. <laughs> so what happened? So um, uh, they said I was having inappropriate communications with the court. The court felt threatened. Inappropriate <laughs> communications with the court? Yes. Uh -huh. Inappropriate yeah. communication. Right. They were saying that uh, it, it, my uh, paper, it, it, it sounded threatening. So uh, I was like, oh, I, when I went down, I talked to the marshals. I said, oh, you leave that threatening because uh, uh, I'm pulling him out of the administrative side and I'm making him hold a common law court. I said, they don't want to hold a common law court. So, uh, like I said, they were looking for me for about a week. And like I said, I live up here in the mountains and you're not going to find him. I don't want you to find him. And even they couldn't find him. So they pulled my sister, this is the school teacher, so they pulled her out of class a couple of times trying to get her to tell them where I was. Really? Oh yeah, she wouldn't tell. But, you know, she was starting to get embarrassed at school, you know, like the U.S. Marshals coming at the were three, you know, coming and looking for a teacher, where's your brother? You know, so, yeah, her friends were you know, a little worried, like, who was I? That they were looking for me. Did so, you get it all straightened out, or what? Well, yeah, what I, I, I got a farm, and I got a whole bunch of animals, so I had to make sure the animals were going to be taken care of in case I didn't come back for a long time. So I had to lock everything up and, uh, you know, make sure, you know, friends, family, everybody knew what was going on and the animals were going to be taken care of. So, yeah. I went to, so I went down to the marshal service and it was funny. We, uh, my sister went with me and uh, we were laughing in the lobby and they finally came out after about 20 minutes. And uh, they said, what's so funny? I said, I, I pity the poor magistrate who's going to try to arraign me. Was he ain't never going to get a contract with me. I said, they were like, why? I was like, I'm never going to enter a plea to anything. I said, this is going to be funny. It's going to be like a hundred years before you guys could even go past the arraignment with me. <laughs> and they were like, no, 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 we told you we're not going to rush you. We just have some questions for you. So I said, okay, fine. You know, I said, you know, I said, but, uh, you know, they said, uh, why is it so hard to believe us that we just wanted a question? I said, oh, come on. You probably got a free poster and a trip to Tahiti for me, too. <laughs> I said, you know, what do you think I'm stupid? I said, you see it on TV all the time. They're like, no, 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 we're not going to do that. So we sat down and talked for a while. And it's so funny, when he first started, uh, he said, uh, we're going to record this. And he said, you'll be recording too. And he started to read, like that little um, like brochure thing, you know, like what they can and cannot do. I said, oh, you're going to give me an LP, huh? Like an operational procedure investigation, huh? He's like, uh, what? I said, yeah. I started reading it off the top of my head. He's like, uh, how do you know that? I said, oh, I went to your website before I came here, and I've seen what you can and cannot do to me. So, <laughs> you know, 
like, oh, so you, you checked up on us? I said, you better believe it. I wanted to know what rights I had, what you could ask, what you couldn't ask. Who were these people? Was it the DOJ or no, the court? That was the U.S. Marshals. U.S. Marshals. So you went to the U.S. Marshals website. Right, and I found out it's called an OPI. And oh, uh, when yeah. you, they ask you to come on down because you're filing like a common law claim, they start getting really worried that they think you're some free man, of, you know, free man on the land kind of thing. They think you're a Tim Turner, you know, President Roosh or something like that. Of course, the judge that's here in my case is uh, criminally uh, going after, the, he's the one who's been assigned to do Tim Turner. So, and both of them just happened to be in Alabama. We just both happened to be like, in, you know, before the same judge at the same time. So, mine is a, 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 a lawsuit, and Turner is actually being criminally indicted. So he, he sees all this common law stuff coming from the Penn Turner crap. So, you know, it's like, uh oh, here comes another common law guy. You know, so. Uh, he's in know. jail, isn't he? Yeah, he's still in jail. None of his paperwork is on PESA. You know, like all of his common law, all of his buddies are filing all kinds of rid of habeas corpuses. And uh, the magistrate said, uh, nobody better send him any more paperwork to help Tim Turner, or that's practicing law without a license in the state of Alabama, and they're going to have like a visit. Marshal Service do. So, <laughs> so I don't know what's going on with the Tim Turner case. You can't find out anything on pace with Tim Turner. It's what the government side is doing. You can't do what Tim is doing. On his side is trying to send to the court. That's, that's he sent me an email about uh, trying to help him and taking donations. And yeah, that's what he said. Yeah, with me, uh, you know, you can't see my orders on, on PESA, and you can't see my paperwork on PESA. You only can see their orders, and, and, and you, know, you can always see the federal court side. They're not putting any common law side and stuff on it. So uh, it's pretty funny how they control PESA. So uh, I talked to the marshals for a good long time, and it was funny. Uh, we got along great, you know, and I showed them right out of their website, which was scary. I showed them at the uscourts.gov. It's like, in, if you guys just want to Google this, www.uscourts.gov website, and the very first sentence says, all federal courts are Article Three courts under the Constitution. So I said to the marshals, I said, what does it say on your webpage? I, I printed it out. And I said, look, I waste a lot of blue ink on your website. I said, you know, but here's the pretty eagle, the United States. I said, this is your website. I said, what does it say? It says, all federal courts are Article Three courts, as it's common law, as it's under the Constitution. So I said, I'm in a federal court. They try to keep bouncing me to the United States District Court, and I keep telling them, stop doing that, bounce me back to the federal court side. I said, there's a massive difference, and these guys are giving me a hard time about it. But look at the orders. One order comes from the uh, federal court, and one order is coming from the United States District Court. They, they know there's a difference. The judges are filling things out under the district court, and the magistrate's writing orders up under the United States District Court. I said, there's two different, there's two different courts in that building. I said, there's seven, all the seven different courts that are in each district court, like bankruptcy and uh, a tax courts. There's, there's like seven different federal cases they hold there. There's seven different cases that they hold under that building. So uh, I said, I just keep trying to drag back over the common law side. So then I said, look a little further on your website. I said, what does it say right here? I said, sure, right to the marshals. I said, right on your website, what does it say? All state courts are common law courts. I said, and what does it say down here? All federal courts are courts of record. I said, now here's the dictionary. And I whipped out the dictionary. I said, what is a court of record? It says court of record. Only, 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 only moves under the common law. I said, so if all federal district courts are created under uh, Article Three of the Constitution, all courts are common law courts, and all courts of record only, only move under common law. I said, what seems to be the problem with me filing a common law court claim for an injury, a harm? I said, for some reason, they keep converting this over to civil rights. And I said, I don't fit into that category. So I said, I'm not black, I'm not gay, I'm not Jewish. He's like, he was like reading the complaint from the judge thing. He's like, yeah, that's what they're saying. They were trying to say that you were like, uh, uh, you know, like saying that you were a white guy and that, you know, like, like, uh, like a, like a, a free man or a Nazi kind of guy saying that, you know, you're not gay. I said, no. I said, you can see I'm not gay. I'm not black. I'm not Jewish. I said, <laughs> they said, oh, now that makes sense. But they're trying to make it seem like you're, uh, this, you, you don't like blacks or gays. Or I said, no, I didn't seem like that. So we started talking in less than almost two hours. So after about 15, 20 minutes, they just shut the video recorder up. They said, we don't got to record you. There's nothing. Really? 
Yeah, where did you meet, what state did you meet the marshals in? Oh, no. the, the, it was Agent Hicks and Hilton, and they were down in our Rono uh, field office in Virginia. So, uh, like I said, it was, great, it was a great meeting because, like I said to them, uh, they were like, well, they said something about kidnapping and all, uh, you know, about child custody. So my kid's with his grandma, and she loves him, and she loves grandma, and he loves her. So what? they said, well, this is about a custody thing. I said, what custody thing? They said, can you see your kid? I said, can you see my kid every day of the week if I want to? I said, well, what are you talking about? They said, oh, they're just thinking it's like you're going to kidnap the kid. I said, and do what with him? I said, he's got downs. My, my mom takes great care of him. I said, I can't handle a kid all by myself. I'm a guy. I said, and he loves grandma, she's retired, she spends all day with him. They have a great time together. Well, what, what, what's the problem? And it's like, well, huh, they were trying to make it seem like you were going to, like, kidnap the kid. I said, kidnap him and do what with him? Hey, what, what, what was the paperwork that they are saying was inappropriate? Well, what it is, it's a common law claim. And, uh, what, and they're trying to... Um, keep it on uh, on the United States District Court side. They don't want to have a common law court of record held there. They don't want to sign. Because the other side can't answer. See, because on the other side, I said, uh, they wanted to answer like under federal rules, like federal rule 12, like 12B6. I said, you can't do that. And they were like, well, yes. And I said, no, you can't because I'm not an attorney. I'm not pro se and I'm not a plaintiff. There is nowhere in law that says a man has to speak legalese. I said, not in the common law, not under the Constitution. I said, in all, by all federal courts, move under the Constitution. I said, I'm relying upon, like, the First Amendment, the Seventh, the Ninth, and the Tenth Amendment. And, and I said, the, the Bill of Rights and the, the Articles. I said, but, you know, everybody knows what that means. So I said, I said, I'm moving under Article uh, 7. I said, because this is a civil suit, more $20, it's under the common law, and I want a trial by jury. I don't want a magistrate's opinion, I don't want the judge's opinion, I don't want anybody's opinion, but the jury's opinion. I said, I don't care what these people are trying to hand me or send back to me, they have no right to even look at any of the paperwork I'm sending to the defendant. So the people who did me wrong, they get to look at it, they get to answer me in 21 days. If they don't, then I'll just go for a default judgment. So, uh, so that's all it is. That's how fast the common law court works. And I said, I am not going to learn Rule 12 v. 6. I said, oh, Rule 12, I don't have to. I said, besides, uh, the federal rules change every uh, six years. I said, and this is the year that's going to change again, so there's going to be all new uh, rule changes. I said, now, what time they change Rule 12 to be um, what Rule 11 used to be? I said, I'm not going to study Rule 12. Then there's nothing in the law that says I have to speak legally or talk like a lawyer. If, if I got, I said, it's a personal injury. It's a personal harm. I said, look, there's a standard form. And I showed them. I said, the 360 form. See that? It says personal injury, personal harm. There you go. Harm to my property. There you go. Mine was harm. I said, just like getting hit by a car. I said, I was harm. I said, all I found was a uh, claim for forgery that they used a forged instrument to interfere my rights. That's all. And I said, how in the hell they spun it to kidnapping and how they spun it to uh, custody? I don't have a clue. I said, because my paperwork, my lawsuit is one page long. I said, I showed it to them. And they read it. They were like, wow, yeah, you're right. It is one page long. And I was like, yeah. I said, but they said, you see who's the defendant? He was like, well, like CPS, DHR. I said, yeah, what is the CPS? The CPS, number one, is a federal agent. He says, oh, you know that, right? I said, oh, yeah, they're a federal agent. He says, because why? I said, you know why? Because they have federal funds and stuff in So even the market... What does CPS stand for? Uh, you know, Child Protective Services. Oh, okay. The federal agency. I, oh, okay. I thought they were state agents. It's a state agency, but it's a federal agent working within a state agency. And a governor still has, uh, like, supreme control over everything in his state, including federal agents. You can tell federal agents to stop that they don't have jurisdiction because they don't have stock. And they have to listen to the governor of the state. So once the marshal seen that the defendant was a federal agent, I said to him, I said, what makes you think I'm going to have an easy chance in federal court when I'm going after a federal agent? He's like, ah, I see where, you, I see where the problem is here. But at least the man was incredibly intelligent. He knew they were a federal agent because they received federal funds. I didn't have to tell him. He told me. So like I said, people don't understand when you're going against CPS or DHR or DSS, whatever it's called, or HHS in your states, they're federal agents. So if you're like, oh, I'm going to run the federal court, if 
federal court do what? You know, you're suing, uh, he says, well, it's a state agency, but it's also a federal agent. When you receive, it's just like anything, you've heard that a million times, any kind of college who accepts uh, federal funds, you know, they have to abide by all kinds of federal, you know, rules. Like if you wanted to have a country club and you're receiving federal money, you got to allow blacks and Jews and white cripples in a wheelchair, you got to let everybody in if you receive federal money. But if you don't receive federal money, you could just have an all girls uh, health club. And, you know, you are so crude, I swear. You are so crude. Anyway, somebody, Josie Lee is asking, Angela asked him about jurisdictional challenge. What happens when they okay. don't answer or give written action, such as frivolous paperwork? Oh, you, you just like I said, when you um, when you have a uh, when you challenge jurisdiction, it's called a claim of consuance. It's C O N S U S A N C E. And that's a claim of consequence. So if anybody tries to drag you to the wrong side of the court, you just file a claim of consequence. The claim of consequence is simple. I, I, I think I can put one on your site. If not, I'll, I'll mail it to you guys. If you want to mail this claim of consequence. It's one page long. Okay. I'll put it there. Yeah, you what know, it says is, you know, you, you've, got, you've got me in the wrong jurisdiction. The wrong jurisdiction means it's control or power over somebody else. Like if you're, um, if you're standing on my feet and you're breaking my toes, I have jurisdiction over you. I can grab you and control you and do whatever I want to you because you're, uh, I have the power to control you. And uh, that's the Tenth Amendment. And that's what the Tenth Amendment says, is that people have the power. The power just means to control somebody else. So if you're standing, you know, in my space, on my toes, you know, if you say, hey, that's my space, back up, up with me, you're in my space. You're claiming that's your jurisdiction. And nobody can get twins with you like you could say, you know what, you need to back up, and you have that right to do it. It's a right, by God, you could say, you're breaking my toes, and I'm going to force you off my toes. So that's all jurisdiction is. Jurisdiction is pretty simple to understand. So when they try to control your paperwork, or they try to control you, or try to drag you into their court before their judge, you're like, hey, oh no, I want to go before a jury. I am not going before no man in no black robe. You are not my friend. I didn't go to law school with you. I don't go to the same golf club with you. I don't go to lunch with you. I'm not going to stand in front of you because I prosecuted as your buddy or as your sister in law. I'm not dealing with you. I want the jury. So when they try to drag you in front of us, you're in the uh, you got the wrong jurisdiction. You, you, you got no control of jurisdiction over them because in this country it's a common law land. Oh, yeah, the Marshal Service loved that. I gave them a map of uh, the world, and there's like uh, just a few common law countries left. And I had colored, you know, I said, look, these are the orange ones, these are the blue ones. This is all civil code, this is all common law. I said, we live in a common law land. I said, so, if we want to drag somebody out of civil court or tax court or bankruptcy court or divorce court or any court, DMV, we could drag them into the common law side. I said, if we lose that ability to drag them over to the proper jurisdiction where we have control over them, I said, we're going to wind up like France. I said, like all these blue countries in Europe, we're going to be like... France. I said, I don't mind. I said, my grandma's from France, my dad's whole family's from Germany. I said, they all live civil. I said, we're not all in jail over there. I said, so, but if we turn to France, I said, then we're all guilty until we can prove ourselves innocent. It's going to be backwards. We're going to live in a code land. I said, right now we live in a common law land. So I love living in a common law land. So anytime somebody tries to drag me into the cold world, I'm going to drag them into the common law side. I said, if I was in France, I couldn't do it. If I said, well, let, let, let me drag you to the common law side, they'd laugh at me. They'd say, you know, go move back to the USA. We don't do common law over here. We do code. So I told them then, I said, look, I said, if all I'm doing when I'm making contact with the judges on that side, I'm demanding from them that they respect the fact that they're Article Three judges and this is a common law land. And if they don't like, you know, working in a common law land as common law judges, you know, I'm going to have to ask for their oath of office. And if they have an oath of office, I said to him, I said to the marshals, I said, you're going to get a phone call from them in a week or two. And they're like, why? I said, because I'm going to demand their oath of office, and then I'm going to go after their bonds. And I said, when I go after the bonds, he said, you know what's going to happen? He said, yeah, they're going to say you're doing terrorism. I said, why? I said, because I'm interfering with the proper function of the government. And I said, so that's what they're going to claim next. 
So he said, gotcha. He said, so that's the phone call we're going to get next to him? I said, yep. So he said, okay. <laughs> so he was funny. They were like, well, God bless you. Just keep going at them the way you got to do it. He says, if you feel if anybody from Alabama is threatening you, he says, we'll come up to your mouth and help you. He says, he says there's an agent that actually lives close nice. to Oh, yeah. He said, there's an agent that actually lives close to you. His name is Agent Bauer up in Harrisburg. He said, uh, I'll give him a call and I'll tell him what's going on. And uh, if you need help, you call him. And he's, uh, you know, he's a really good friend of mine. He'll come up there and help you if you think anybody's coming up from Alabama to give you a hard time. So, uh, like I said, you know, it, it, you know, it was a real nice visit after a while. You know, because, uh, like you said, I was really crude. Because, like I said to them, too, they said to me, oh, you can record us if you want to. And, I, like I said, I guess it's because I'm so crude like that. I said to the guy, I said, no, I'm not afraid to take recording you. And he's like, why? I said, because you're a man and you're a man. He said, like, yeah. I said, well, I said, if you were a little light in your loafers, uh, if you were, like, gay or something like that, you better believe I'd be recording you. I said, because you'd twist all my words around. So I said, if you're a woman, you better believe it. I'd be video recording because I'd have to explain how I talk to her because she wouldn't like the way I'm talking. I said, but if I don't like the way you're talking or you don't like the way I'm talking, we're going to rearrange the furniture. And if we walk out of here with a few teeth missing, I don't think you're going to be a couple of Nancy boys and, and uh, arrest me for it. I think we're just going to go around and around, and we're going to slug it out man to man here, and we're going to go home. I said, but uh, I don't think you guys are going to sue me, and I'm not going to sue you. So like I said, we'll have to just shut the recording off. He said, ah, you know, you're a normal guy, so you're a normal guy. But like I said, crude. Well, the marshals loved me being crude because I was straight up and honest, and I wasn't... Uh, Tap dancing around them. I was telling them exactly, you know, you're going to get a phone call from the court. I said, because they're going to say I'm interfering with the proper function of government. He said, nah, that's take care of He said, that's right. Said, that's the next phone call you're going to get. Because I'm going to make them move it over to the common law side. And they are not going to want to do it. I said, but somebody's got to do it. I said, if I don't do it, who else is going to do it? So I said, you know, somebody's got to protect, you know, people's rights. I said, they'll protect your rights too. So that's why they were like, well, God bless you, keep it up, and we'll let the folks down in Alabama know at the Marshal Service down there that you're an okay guy. And it was funny, he said, can we take a picture of you? They want me to send a picture of you. I said, do I really have to take one? He's like, nah. I said, I can make a really goofy face if you want to. He said, no, I'll ever get upset, don't think we're cool or out of here. He said, oh, okay. He said, nah, you don't got to take a picture, you know. He says, uh, he says, and if you file any writs, and he says, and they get, uh, he said to me, he said, but he said, you file any writs, and they get uh, uh, issued to me, he said, I'll be glad to carry them out for you. So it was nice to talk to marshals who, uh, you know, really understand the common law and actually hold their oaths of office to the Constitution. Well, uh, I don't trust any of them. I'm sorry, I don't. They okay. talk nice and they want to act like they're your friend, but I, I don't know, you know, I just... Uh, but anyway... <laughs> They wanted to arrest me. I was right there. If they were, if they could have arrested me and they could have Tim Turner me, Tim Turner, Tim Turner's gone. I mean, you can't see oh. any paperwork. Like, isn't? I don't see anything about when he's going to come to trial. I don't see anything on pace about Tim Turner. I mean, he keeps referring to himself as the president, so I don't know. Yeah, I don't know his real first name. It's like Frank or something like that. But everybody knows it was Tim. I mean, when you see on pace, then you get his first real real name. Oh, and they don't care about anything he's done, so it doesn't matter. But I'm saying you don't hear anything on uh, on Pacer, you know, because that's what's bad. And I said that's sad that you only see one side. If the, if you're starting to use common law stuff, Pacer, they don't put that stuff on Pacer. They don't want people like who listen to these talk shows to, uh, you know, see how we're trying to move them from the civil side, uh, you know, to the, to the code side over to the common law side. So it should be Just be careful how you word things in your paperwork, because they will, don't, once they put that label on you, paper terrorist, oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> look at, look at um, Dave Merland. Oh, yeah. The slammer still. Yeah, but look at, like I said, the marshals, uh, I said, I handed my lawsuit, was one page wrong, uh, one page long. They read it, like, in two minutes. They said, this is it. I said, that's it, sir. One page lawsuits. I said, that's all I do is one page. And they're like, I said, no son of Yahweh, flesh and blood. Oh, and is that on the website? Do I have a copy of it? Yeah, I could give it, I could send you one. I'm pretty sure I did, but I'll send you another one. Just I think you. it's up there already, isn't it? I don't know. Well, I put, I put a four or five page one on it for people to read. 
because they wanted to know what the story was. And I said, okay. And I said, this is what the story is. I said, but the lawsuit's only one page long. So, uh, like I said, they read the lawsuit, and it's nothing crazy. There's nothing crazy on there, like me saying, uh, flesh and blood, or God, Jesus, Yahweh, you know, supreme being, sovereign. There's none of that nonsense. They just said, I am man, all that's been done wrong. Defendants, you know, uh, one, uh, CPS is DHR, federal agent, uh, state agency, um, and, you know, a jurisdiction. It's close, the courthouse is close to the defendants. Three, you know, uh, uh, jurisdiction I had over the parties is because it's with the Russ. I used the, you know, uh, uh, Title 28, 1332, diversity of the parties. And, a, you know, matter of controversy was more than uh, $20. I said, you know, I've done the cause of action, forgery. We used the forged instrument to interfere my rights. And then the remedy was that uh, the instrument is to be deemed uh, uh, a forgery and is to have no force of operation. And then, uh, and then the last part was uh, compensation, damages. As I put the, the top dollar amount for compensation, it's so funny, the Marshall points down. He said, did you put that number down there? It was like 300 put, million. Oh, yeah. I was gonna say, did you put one of those ridiculously large numbers down? Yeah, but he started laughing when I told him what it was. He said, what, what's this number? Did you write that number down? He didn't say the number. I said, honestly, I said, uh, I, I said, uh, if you read the losses I sent in, I only wrote 360. I forgot to write the rest of it. I said, I'm really not, I said, I really not expect to see a dime. I said, but, uh, I said, what that reflects is, um, one second for every, uh, one dollar for every second that they use the forged instrument to interfere my rights. And he just started laughing. He's like, oh, I said, yeah, fortunately for them, it just happened to be 364,665,566 seconds. I said, so unfortunately for them, <laughs> I said, and I said, look, I said, uh, Sandy Callahan, a lieutenant colonel who works up in the Department of Justice as a criminal prosecutor in Birmingham, Alabama, told me in front of the whole family, put a ridiculously big number up there. He says, or no, he said, or nobody's going to pay attention to your lawsuit. But if they don't sue him for a dollar, he said, make it up, whopper. I said, he told him right from the whole family. Mm -hmm. and and I said, I, I gave him the business card that the man gave me. I said, call him up. And I said the same thing with the last judge that I faced in uh, Alabama for the family court. I said, I said, here's his business card. I said, he told me if I needed any help to call him. I said, so obviously the Department of Justice man isn't afraid of me. And obviously, uh, William Owings, I said, I gave him the man's business card. Uh, I copied it for him. I photocopied and I showed him the copy that I showed him the business card. I said, call him William Owens. But he was the last judge who heard my case. It was the 30th trial. And he realized I was getting screwed by the state. And uh, he said, this is outrageous. And he said, uh, he gave me his, he said, you've got to appeal my decision today and I'll show you how to appeal it. And he gave me his business card. So I called him, told the marshals, I said, call up the judge. You know, he personally gave me his heat course. He stopped the trial in the middle of the trial. He told me to approach the bench. And he said, you know how to file an appeal? I said, no, sir. He says, well, uh, he looked over at the, uh, my co-counsel guy. He says, uh, are you going to help him file an appeal? He said, nope. <laughs> he said, that's what I figured. He told me to meet him out in the hallway. And that uh, he'd go over the appeal process with me. He walked me down to the clerk of the court's office. He gave me the paperwork from the clerk of the court's office. The judge was walking his, in his robe down the hallway with me. You know, so I'm a big, goofy-looking biker guy, so it must have been the guy was a little judge, so it must have looked kind of silly, me walking in and talking to him. And when we got in front of the clerk of court's office, he said, you got a cell phone? I said, yeah. So he came down from the Supreme Court of Alabama. So he said, here, let me call the clerk real quick. So he called over the clerk. He knew the number right off the top of his head. And he said to the clerk of the court, this man needs a copy of his case file, and he needs to know how they took his child, and they won't tell him. So they said there's a contract in here somewhere, but I'm the judge and I can't find it. He can't find it, and the state refuses to produce it. And under contract law, they don't have to produce the contract. So the state wasn't lying. So uh, that's part of contract law. If, the, if two parties are in a contract dispute and, you, and you're one of the parties and you don't want the judge to interpret the contract, you could just say, I don't want the judge to the third party to interpret the contract, and that's too bad. And if you don't have your copy of the contract to bring before the court, the other side doesn't have to bring that. So, uh, no, like I said, the judge helped me fill out an appeal. I said I called him up a couple of times with some questions on some paperwork, and uh, he helped me out. I said I appealed the case, and I finally got a copy of the contract. 
I said, now I'm at the lawsuit part, now I'm suing the federal court. But it's not going to be easy because, like I said, Family Services, CPS, they are, they are federal agents. So they're all really tight, you know, so obviously the federal court's not going to help me. I said, so I got to drag him over the common law side and I got to get him before a jury or get a default decision against them. And they want to try to use federal rules of civil procedure, but there's nothing in the Constitution that says that a man has to file a lawsuit in a federal court and they has to rely on federal rules of civil procedure. I said, well, the federal rules of civil procedure are uh, created by a branch of the government. And I, I'm not a branch of the government. This is created by the Supreme Court of the United States. I said, that's where the federal rules of civil procedure come from. It comes from the Supreme Court of the United States and that's a state branch of the government. I'm not a branch or an arm of the government. I'm a man. I stand above the government. I, I'm a part of it. I'm not allowed to stand away from the government. I don't have to be part of the government if I don't want to be. I don't swear an oath or allegiance to the Constitution. I said, you men did. You, you as marshals did. You have to protect my rights. I said, this is your job. I said, you, you can't let a government agency, you know, tell me what to do if I don't wish to do it. So I don't have to abide by federal rules of civil procedure. And they want me to, and I won't play that game. I won't be pro se, and I won't be an attorney. I'm just going to be a man making a claim against, you know, something that did me wrong. And they're going to answer way or another in court. So it's pretty simple. Does anybody have any questions there for you, Angie? I don't see any. Uh, let me look. Uh, does anyone have a question? Um, you know what? Uh, oh, yeah, I've had a question here, but let's see here. Back there, he wanted to know what you, what you, what do you think they'd arrest you for? What charge? Uh, injustice, terrorism? Yeah, interfering with the proper function of government. That's terrorism. That's paper terrorism. If you, if you, it's when you're, uh, like I said, but that's that's a good thing too. I told the marshals, I said it would kind of be good to be charged with interfering with the proper function of government because then I would get them to admit once and for all that that courthouse is government, is government employees. I said because right now I'm having a hard time with them to admit that either they're a government employee in their federal court or they're a private corporation called the United States. I said so if it's a private corporation called the United States. Yes, I, I'd be harassing them. It'd be like I'm calling Coca-Cola or Pepsi-Cola or I'm calling a company, a private corporation, and I keep calling them, demanding things from them, and I have no right to do that. Mm. So if the United States District Court tries to say that they're a government and I'm interfering with the proper function of government, I said, well, that's wonderful. I said that they finally admit that they're the government, that they're not a private organization. I said, so, I said, we're having a big problem. I said, all of us out here, I said, you know, who's listening to talk shows, all of us have this big problem. Is it a government court or is it a private organization? If they're private, if they're all private corporations, these courts, well, then we have no rights. If they're government, if they're public corporations, if they're public, if it's a public building and a public court, we have rights. So that's what I said to the marshals, too. I said, so we're all having a big problem out here. So I said, if they, I said, I hope they admit that they're a government agency because then I have to answer the man. Then I have rights. I said, but if they're not government, it's not a public court, then it's a private court. And I have no rights. Then I have to ask them permission to, to be there and to talk to them. I said, right, then I'd be harassing them. I said, that'd be more of harassing them than uh, terrorism. Of course, terrorism is only can be directed towards the government and the interference with the proper function of a government. That's terrorism. By paper or by, you know, physical threats, you know, that, that, that's, oh, terrorism is only to a government and the function of a government. I said, you can't terrorize Coca-Cola. That's ridiculous. You, could call you know, I, I got some emails coming across my desk from um, Rod Class saying that all the government offices have been vacated. Well, that's what there is. Well, if all the government, all the government if vacated. They're all private. He said they're all private entities in there, private contractors. Well, then you can't get, you can't be charged then with uh, terrorism, paper terrorism, because terrorism is directed to a government. Terrorism is not directed towards Coca-Cola. I could be charged with harassing the poor receptionist at Coca-Cola every five minutes calling her up. But 
you can't be charged with terrorizing the, the, the lady at Coca-Cola. Just trying to get her to, you know, say, hey, man, there's a mouse in my bottle of Coke. Who's going to pay me for this? She, she can't say, oh, that you're terrorizing, you're interrupting with the proper function of Coca-Cola. She sees your phone number coming through on her switchboard. She just says, oh, you again can click, and she can just hang up. Well, that's harassment. I don't know if I would call it terrorism. You know, the government puts these labels on people. But what I'm saying is that... Um, well, here, there's a question from Jesse Livermore. Ask him if he knows what disclaimers one might use in front of a grand jury. Uh, well, the big thing, too, is that it's the same thing with when you're even doing your own jury. If you don't, if you don't, if, if you're, if, if, is he adopted before grand jury? Is that the question? Like, is he saying that he's a defendant who's being indicted? Uh, no, he's just saying, ask him if he knows what's... There was a gentleman on a week or two or three back who was talking about, you know, these three words that are the disclaimer that you should always use in, when you go before a grand jury. And I think, um, and someone sent me the answer and said it was void where prohibited. But I don't, you know, I'm not yeah. sure what Jesse, Jesse, I don't know what you're getting at. Yeah, so that's what the... Chappie, that's what the Chappie always says, that Chappie Chapman man always says, you know, void or prohibited by law. But the, anything, anytime you ever walk into a court, if you're being charged under a code, uh, you immediately convene your own court and you drag, you, know, you create a court under, in the common law. And they're saying that somebody is trying to drag you into an administrative court and they're trying to administrate your property without any right. See, when, you, when you're under a code world, they have duties, obligations, and privileges. They don't have rights. Only man has rights in the common law. So when they try to drag you into a, under a code, like a Title 50 code, a Title 18 code, or a Title 26, when they try to drag you into a code world, you can say, whoa, 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 whoa. we're not in France. Not yet. This isn't France Cold, yet. Cold world. Right. We're not in a code world, C-O-D-E. We're, <laughs> we're not in a code world yet. We're still in a common law land. So when somebody tries to indict you in front of a grand jury, you just say, well, good. While you're there, I'm going in to indict you that you're in, trying to administrate me or my property without any rights. I don't care if it's the IRS. I don't care, I don't care who it is is trying to indict you. You just say, do you have any right to do what you're doing? No, they don't. They have a privilege to do what they're doing, but they don't have a right. So only a man has a right in this country, in this nation. We only, we only have rights. The government has duties or obligations or privileges that could be changed, modified, re, you know, rewritten, recodified. But man hey. has rights that can't be changed. We have an, a question from North New Jersey. Go ahead, North New Jersey. Yes, how you doing? Um, Hi. Speak up, right. please. Okay. Um, wouldn't a private corporation be can barely okay. hear you. Hello. Can you hear me now? Yes, yeah, sir. Okay. okay. Would, the <coughs> would the private corporation be a paper terrorist and domestic terrorist because they send threatening letters out to people and then if they don't show up, they kidnap them? So wouldn't they be a paper terrorist and domestic terrorist? Were you able to hear them pretty clear there, Ange? Um, say it again about paper terrorism. I said, wouldn't a private corporation be a paper terrorist? A private oh. corporation? Yeah, I see what he's saying. He's saying, that, that, right, could have. Well, like I said, honestly, sir, uh, terrorism is only when it's directed towards the proper function of a government. So you could say, yes, technically you can say that because you're self-governing. So technically, if you want to be cute, yeah, you could say that they're sending paperwork to you and, uh, and, they're try and they're interrupting with your proper function because you are a self-governing entity or a self-governing person or a self-governing being. So you're self-propelled and you determine which way you're going to go. So yes, if you want to be cute, sure, it, it totally would be totally lawful. You just convince 12 people on a jury, well, 7 out of 12, that that's true and you'll win. But... Like I said, the whole trick is convincing seven out of twelve of the people that live around you on the jury that you know that that's terrorism. Okay. So uh, it's a great uh, question, man. Right, oh, no problem, man. Good talking to you again. Okay, anybody else? Press star eight if you want to ask him a question. No, I type it into the chat. 
If anybody else has anything to ask, please come out and do so. Anybody else? Everybody's quiet tonight. Yeah, I'm trying to read the chat board and see if I see anything back there. But like I said, the same thing with grand juries is the same thing. You know, it's, it's any time, I don't care if you get a traffic ticket, I don't care what it is, you drag them over to the common law side of the court. I get them all the time in traffic court, it's so sweet. All I say to the judges, I look at the other two sides, I look at the cop and I look at the prosecutor, I said, we're here to discuss that I broke the law, right? Yeah, good. We're here because I broke, all right, good. The judge was like, we're here because I broke the law, right? Yeah, good, wonderful, let's go. So then they start reading the charges. That's a, that's a code that you're saying I violated. That's a code. I thought we were here to discuss that I broke the law. This is the law. I said, yeah. I throw them their own book. I said, what's the difference in your book? Like in the Code of Virginia, 1950, what's the difference between law and a code? So that, like I said, they read the difference between a code and a law. I said, huh, gotcha. Because you said we were here to discuss the fact, fact that uh, I broke the law. So I, did you just make a false claim in court? Are all you folks just turning, you know, just making false claims and saying that I broke the law? They're like, well, you know what I meant. I was like, no. You said that we're here to discuss the fact that I broke the law. I did not break the law. And I said, are you sure you people are going to be able to prove that I broke the law today? Really? Okay. I can prove in two seconds I did it. So they start to read. I said, well, I object. I said, that's not the law. They said, yes, it is. I said, that's the code. I said, what does it say? The code of Virginia. Where are you pulling that from? It's a code book. It's not the law. What's the difference between law and a code? Here you go. Is there anybody harm or injured? No. That's a code. Then. One is the law, one is the code. I said, so, are you committing false claims in court? Are you guys committing perjury? you just feel like coming to court and saying whatever you feel like saying? You're lying? I thought you guys swore up and down that we were here to discuss the fact that I broke the law. Huh, I guess I didn't break the law, did I? Then I guess there's no reason for the beat here, is there? Oh man, they hate it, man. I catch them with their own words. I brought them over to the common law side. by just saying something simple. Are we here to, 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 because I broke the law? Is that what you're claiming? Are you claiming I broke the law? Yeah. Well, the only problem is only a man can make a claim. So I guess we're over here on the common law side now. So who's here to make the claim? Now, like, oh, geez. This guy got us like in two seconds or less. He said, yep, I'm done, sir. Anything else you need? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I've been doing this for 20 years, 30 years. I don't know, I'm 50 years old now, so I've been doing this since I'm a little kid. Just getting him in and out of court so fast, it's scary. No hundred pages of paperwork. I said the marshals loved it too. They're like, holy cow, this lawsuit was so simple. And they're like, he said, I read it twice. He said, oh, you were talking, I read it twice. I was like, yeah. I said, go read some free man of Montana nonsense. It'll take you two years to read that dribble. And you can even decipher it. I can't even make it out head to tail. I said, I was guilty of that stuff. I told him. I said, believe me. I said, I wrote a lawsuit back in like 2002, 2003. Like 300 pages long. It was ridiculous. I did all that free man of Montana nonsense. It gets me nowhere. I said, you know what? I made a claim. I'm a man. I could do it in one page or less. <laughs> he said, yeah, obviously. We've seen you do it. I said, yeah. I said, the federal court just doesn't like it that simple. My whole cause of action is one sentence law. One sentence. I said, forgery. They used the forged instrument to interfere with my rights. Period. I'm done. Is anybody going to say you didn't do it? And I said, see Exhibit A. I said, there you go. Here's Exhibit A. The man read the, man read the contract. The federal marshals read the contract. He read it a couple times. He said, holy cow. This is a ridiculous contract. This doesn't have your name, your wife's name, or the baby's name on it. I said, no. It was, it was signed in, <laughs> before he was born. <laughs> I said, and he was born premature. We thought he was going to be born two months later. I said, this is a ridiculous contract. He said, yeah, this is beyond ridiculous. He said, they're just trying to make it so you can't collect a dime. He said, I see what they're doing. They're just uh, doing whatever they can. So now they're saying that you're uh, terrorizing them, now that you're threatening them. Now you're having improper communications with them. I was like, yeah, they don't want to pay out. I said, you know, they got friends. they got buddies, you know. They're not going to want to pay me a dime. So they're not going to do it easy anyway. They're not going to make, you know. Yeah. So the marshal said, yeah, so like I said, thank God the marshal said that he's going to tell you Alabama marshals what I'm doing and that they interfere with his rights. And that they said it's clear. They kept the contract. They kept the copy of the lawsuit. And uh, he's like, holy cow. He said, you know what? If you write out a writ, he said, I'll be more glad to carry it out. He said, you write something, you get it, you know, and we'll carry it out. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah. 
you know, like I said, I trust them now only because I, I could have sworn we were going to get jobbed, tasered, you know, I could have sworn we walked into the federal building, I was going to be gone. I said, I thought I'd never see daylight again. You know, <laughs> that's what I told the guy. I said, I said yeah, you got a free, you know, free tickets to go see the Lakers or a TV or a microwave oven waiting for me too, you know, mm-hmm. just me to come down just so you could beat me up and fall me off. They do that. Oh, yeah. Big people. Wait a second, the North New Jersey, did you have a question? Yes, um, this is Carl Lenz, right? Yes. yes ma'am. Okay, uh, um, I didn't didn't get on the call till late, and I was wondering if you um, told us um, on the call how you made out in your federal district court um, case. Oh yeah, I was telling you, I was telling you folks that uh, what happened is I told them 21 days I said, um, you, I said, I just got off the phone with the governor's attorney, and the governor's attorney believes that it's a civil rights complaint. I said, so I had to tell him, no. I said, you know I filed a personal injury claim, right? A personal harm claim, right? A personal claim. He said, yes. He said, but why is the court uh, making it a civil rights complaint? So, I mean, uh, the, the, the attorney for the governor's Franklin Johnson, and he's a smart man. He's the only man I've ever talked to in my life who can keep up with me. There's nobody I've ever talked to who understands common law like I do. And this man, for the with the governor's attorney, he was good. I mean, he kept up with me. I said, did you see this one order that the court generated? He's like, yeah. I said, how many jurisdictions does this man have going on? He said, four. I said, yeah, you noticed that too. He's got four jurisdictions. Going on, he's got his own personal jurisdiction. He's got civil, he's got common law. I said he's got a the subject matter jurisdiction in the civil uh, civil rights side. I said this, this guy's got jurisdiction all over the map. I said it's only one paragraph. I said I'm glad you saw that too. He says yeah, we can't figure out what he's doing. I said neither can I. So I called the federal district court and I said look, you've got to kill this complaint. You've got to just dismiss it. Twelve v six. If you do whatever you got to do to kill that thing off, I said because not only you know, my rights you're interfering with the DHRs and the governor's rights because they don't know what to, how to answer. I said, I actually got to call the governor's office explaining to him how to protect his rights from a false complaint being filed. I said, this is ridiculous. I shouldn't have to help this guy. I said, so kill this damn complaint. So they did. So the next day they uh, said that a civil rights complaint is a, uh, they had no subject matter jurisdiction over, over that complaint. So it's like wonderful. So right now all I have to do is send in an order for them to sign, seal, and stamp and sent back to me my um, uh, orders that I placed in the court. I placed four orders with the court. I know it's on Angela's website, the four orders I placed. And I told them they got to uh, they got to mail them back to me. And uh, that's what I said to the marshals. That's going to be fine. Because one, obviously, is the $300 gazillion. <laughs> and the other one is to avoid all court orders. And the uh, other one is that uh, the, the forged instrument is to be have no force of operation you know, in any jurisdiction in this nation, on this land. So that was like, the, that was three of the court orders. So that's going to be fun to see if the clerk of the court is actually going to sign, stamp them, and seal them. And when they don't, if I'm, I saw it to the marshals, I'm pretty sure they're not going to sign, seal, and stamp, and deliver them, because it's been t- more than 21 days now. And the other side failed to answer. I said, so what I'm going to have to do is I said, I'm going to have to make a demand for their oath of office. And I said, and I showed them the, you know, I showed them the, their own code book, and I said, this is their oath of office that they must uh, uh, take, you know, to hold that office. And if they're employees, they they, are, they also have to take that oath as well. I said, but the officer of the court has to be bonded. The employees aren't bonded, but the officers are bonded. I said, so then I'm going to go and I'm going to demand um, their bond. I said, so that's the point I'm at now to send them the order demanding that they send me back uh, four orders, or three orders, uh, to send back to me signs being open, delivered. And when they give me a hard time, then I have to go after them and prove to them that they are an Article Three court under the Constitution. I did put a money order in, and the money order was written out to the federal court, not to the United States District Court. So they, they already sent it to me. It's like, oh, wait a second, we already cashed that. I said, yeah, but you, you cashed it, and I, I wrote federal court on it. And they said, no. United States District Court is the same as federal court. I was like, mm, not even close. I said, because my name is called Rudolph Lentz and my dad's name is Rudolph Carl Lentz. I said, just because it's the same combination of words doesn't mean we're the same person. It's not the same thing, ma'am. So I said to the Marshal Service, this is going to be fun because I purposely wrote out a money order for US United States Postal and from the Post Office for grant fifty dollars to the federal court. So if the United States District Court signed a check that was not written out to them, holy cow, that's like beyond like that. 
to always write a personal check to them, not a money order, because it's easier to see how they signed it on the on the back, how they endorsed it. Oh yeah, but like I said, a lot of people who are listening to your show right now, especially like a lot of class man, if he's listening, he'll tell you that the only real true money in this country is the United States Postal Service money order, because it's like international. But I, I know what you're saying, Ange, it's a lot easier, right? I totally agree with you, but like I said, most people tell you the United States Postal Service, Union, World Union Postal Service, you know, it's, they said that's the best form of proof that there's money. Yeah, but you can't see how they endorse it. You got a copy, a receipt copy of how you made it out, but you never get to see because what was that guy's name? Oh, years ago, he was taking on all the judges. He got copies of their financial papers and because um, he was helping his daughter with a custody issue. And when he wrote out the check, he made it to the family court. But when he got it back, it had some judicial endorsement on the back that oh, yeah. he uh, well, I got, crazy. Yeah, I got the receipt from the Postal Service. I mean, I could ask them to PDF it, you know, find it in their system somewhere and send me a PDF copy of front and back. But just for the fact that I wrote it out to the federal court, that guarantees me a federal court. You know, I'm not to be moved in federal court, not in the United States District Court. I was like, look, I got a copy of the receipt. No, but I thought you said they they modified. Did they alter the, the heading on the money order that you made it out to? No, no, no. They just, I guarantee you, they just deposited it. They, they said, oh, it's the same federal court, you know, the, you know whoever they deposited with, like the no, local bank ladies. Like, oh, yeah, it worked. It's all the same, you know. I don't know, but anyway. No, they're not going to scribble it out and write something else. You can't scribble out somebody's name and put a different name on there. That would look pretty bad if they tried to do that. No, I guarantee you, they just, because uh, you can see the PDF of the money order on, on a face of website under my case number. Yeah, but can't you challenge it if, if if you make it out to one entity and it's endorsed by a different entity? Can't you challenge that somehow? And well, like I said, it's like and under the rules of the federal true. under the rules of the federal court, I get the right to move a trial by jury under the Seventh Amendment. So under the Seventh Amendment, it's in a, you know under the federal court that I get the right to move a trial by jury. So it's like, well, wait a second, you took my three hundred fifty dollars, where's my trial by jury? You know, so uh, I'll go. Like I said, there's so many different ways. I told the marshal service that uh, I'm, I'm coming after these people. I said it's scary. You know, boxing them in a the corner. They're gonna have to either admit that they're a government and I'm interfering with the proper function of government. Well, if they're the government, well then they could be held to the constitution. If it's a private organization, well then they can't say I'm interfering with the proper function of government. I'm only interfering with the private function of uh, Coca-Cola or Pepsi, and all I could be charged with is harassment. You know, but then I could say, wait a second, I paid $350 to a government court. I didn't pay $350 to a private court. Did that private court steal the money from the public court? That, that sounds pretty bad, I told the marshals. I said, so they're going to have to either admit or deny that they're a private court or they're a public court. I said, now, that's, that's the fun thing. I said, nobody's on these, any of these talk shows has ever gotten to this point that I am with these people forcing them to admit or deny. Are you a private corporation? Because like Rod Class said, oh, they they all abandoned, blah, 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 blah. It's like, good. Did you get them? Did you sue them to prove that they are? Or did you just read it in a book? Or somebody just told you that somebody told you by hearsay? So I said to the marshals, now I'm going to pin these people because I'm going to charge them with stealing my money. If, if, if it's a private court, if Coca-Cola intercepted my money that I was giving to a public courthouse, if a private entity cashed my check, they're in trouble. I said, so they're going to have to answer up. So one way we're going to find out, one way or the other, is this a public court or is this a private court? Because I wrote the check out to the public court. Where did it go? See, that's Dean, Dean has a question for you. Go ahead, Dean. Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, well, I'm a fellow Virginian with you. Hey, Adler, if you don't mind, would you share my uh, contact information with him? Okay. And, uh, we can talk, and then uh, I can find out how how to kick tail in court. Like, are you done? <laughs> uh, now, another thing you can get them for if they've done that, thing, if they cash that uh, that uh, uh, postal money order wrong, uh, wouldn't that be the same as uh, mail fraud? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Like I said, they intercepted that they intercepted a check that I wrote out to a public court. I wrote a check out to a public court. What are you doing with it? Where did it go? You see what I'm 
same. Yeah, I yeah. love it. It, it took yeah. a little for me to figure out how I'm going to get these people because there's ways to not pay the filing fee. But if I didn't pay the filing fee, uh, then I would be admitting that I'm in a public court. And uh, like I said, the, the odds of working through, to, to get them to acknowledge the, for, for me to file free, they would give me so much nonsense and I had to file as a pauper. But if you file as a pauper, everybody knows who listens to these things. If you're a bankrupt country or a bankrupt person, you have no rights. Your creditor determines what you can and cannot have. So you never file bankruptcy and you never, never file that you're a pauper because then a the judge will determine whether or not you do get to go into that court or not. And then he'll get to determine what your rights are once you get into that court. So instead of going to form a pauper route or pauper form route, whatever nonsense that is, I said, no, you know what? I got the 350. I'm going to pay it to the public court. I'm going to come back and claim it now. Like, you know, in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to claim to get my money back. I'm going to say, oh, you know what? I just realized I messed up. I just paid $350 to the public court. What am I doing? The, the courts are free to the public. They're like a public library. Oh, the courts are free. Oh, please send me back my $350. I've done that. <laughs> you like me, huh? <laughs> I like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, believe me. I've been, just, I've been doing this since I'm a little kid, man. Believe me. You know, like I said, because somebody asked me that, they said, what got you into this? Is in 1972, New York State outlawed corporal punishment spanking kids. So it's like, what do you mean? It's like illegal now? They said, no, it's the difference between legal and lawful. So they showed me the code book and they showed me and said, holy cow. So that's what really got me into law back then when I was a little kid learning the difference between well, what's lawful, like your mom and dad could hit you, but it's illegal for somebody other than your mom and dad to hit you. So yeah, I've been pushing the envelope, man, since I've been a little kid. Now that I knew more than men, then I knew the difference between legal and lawful. So I, this just comes naturally to me to totally be like, you call an asshole, and I'm just a total, I'm just really, I'm good at it. <laughs> you know, I'm just, just telling you, look over here while I'm really doing something over here, like misdirection with these people. Uh, I'm, I'm well, that's the way you do these people. You can't come straight at them. You can't play by the book because they won't play by the book. That they're so corrupt, it's, it's scary. That, that they tell you in one breath, you can look at them and you can say the court of the court, are you a federal court? And she'll say yes. And then you say, okay, are you United States District Court? Yes. Okay, ma'am, which one are you? Yes. You know, I was like, that doesn't have an answer. And she'll just say yes. It's like, because she can be, like I said, every district court is also a bankruptcy court, it's a criminal court, it's also a, uh, you know, maritime court. Every district court has like seven different courts that are heard before. You just got to force your common law court to stay front and center. That's the whole trick, because they keep trying to drag you into the civil side, into the into the code world. And I don't want to go over the administrative code world. I want to stay in the common law side. They try to keep tricking you to making a mistake with your paperwork by saying that you're pro se, or sure jurist, or using a legalese words. See, none of my paperwork has any legalese words in it. Because if I speak legalese, if I speak Chinese, they could speak legalese or Chinese back to me. So I speak very plain, common, simple, one syllable words. And the marshals are like, this is so simple to read, it's scary. I said, yes, there is not one legalese word in there. Everything you could find out of a common Webster's dictionary. I said, you don't want to use their words, because once you use their words, they can answer back in their words. I said, that's what you don't want. Yeah, you don't so want to cite. So you don't put anything in there about your uh, political, st or your, um, uh, your, your status? Uh, just say I'm a man. And there you go. It's really simple. <laughs> you know, just say you're a man, and that's your status. Oh. So you do, so you just, you just speak it. You don't put the uh, paperwork in there saying it. Uh, like I said, I'm, uh, my lawsuit, all I did was put an ass in it, I'm a man. I mean, that, that it's, it was pretty simple. I mean, it, it wasn't really, you know, I'm a man. You know, uh, it, 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 my lawsuit is so simple, it's scary. I mean, I can send you it. It's, it's only one page long. <laughs> I mean, I'm getting it on the internet right now. I mailed it to somebody the other day, and it's, uh, like I said, it's, it's so simple, it's scary. And, uh, like I said, that's the whole trick, is because the, the, the all you have to do is say is you're, you're a man and that um, you're making a claim and right there you're on a common law side because it's assumed or presumed in this country that um, this is common law and that a man has can hold court in a common law. So to me, it's, it's that simple. You know, Why would you want to add anything more than just saying that uh, I'm a man and I'm making a claim because only a man can make a claim. 
the government can't make a claim. They filed criminal complaints against you. So like somebody, Angela was saying before, I forgot the man's name, he writes this ridiculously really long uh, criminal complaint, a civil complaint against the government. And I'm like, it's a complaint. You know, anybody can make a complaint, but only man can make a complaint. Why can't a man make a claim against the government instead of making a complaint against the government? So um, that, that's the way I look at it. I just look at it incredibly simple. You know, that, it, you know, that um, uh, a, a claim, only man can make a claim. No, no, that's he's on here saying that eventually they're going to stop that process because it's not correct. A man cannot do anything. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> man, that can't, man created the courts. Well, what do you mean man can't do anything? What does it say? Oh, what the language of this man is not the proper status. <laughs> Eventually they're going to stop that process because it's not correct. A man can't do anything. Okay, he just be funny, I guess. What type of man? And he says, what type of man? It's just I, a man. That's it. You don't. You don't. You don't put a uh, like you said. Like you just say, God. It, when you say God, or I say God, everybody believes God is like that one thing that created everything. So now, if you say the rainbow God, or the thunder God, or the hailstone God, you know, or the you know, it diminishes his capacity. If you just say God, it covers it all. If you try to diminish the noun by putting, you know, an adjective in front of it, why would I want to diminish my status? I'm just a man. I just said, I'm a man. That's what I kept saying to the marshals. I said, look, all I know is I'm a man, and they did me wrong. I said, that's it. I said, I, I got nothing else to say to anybody. I said, I'm a man, and they did me wrong. And I'm like, oh. Daniel, Daniel defense on here in San Carl, don't you remember your conversation with Ed? Ed. Ed, Ed, Ed. Ed, Ed oh, the, the clan man. man. Ed the Clan, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And when I realized, oh, he's like, holy cow, I know Ed now. Oh, yeah. I didn't realize. I kept saying, I said, no. I said, you know, black people have rights, too. I said, Ed, what are you talking about? I said, Bless justice is blind in this country. I said, no. I said, what are you saying about this 1802 hack? Oh, okay. I said, look, I said, I don't care if you're, I don't care what, I don't care if you're purple. I don't care if you're a Martian. If you come before me, I'm blind. I don't care what you're wearing. Just tell me the story. And Ed is like, oh, no, he says, only white men have. I said, oh, no, 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 no. I said, no, don't even go there with me. I said, I'm not even playing that game. I said, you know, the only reason why I look white is because we have a yellow sun in the sky. If we had a purple sun in the sky, I'd probably look pitch black, too. I said, I don't want to hear it. I said, don't even go there with me. You're wasting your time. I said, then somebody called up and told me. He said, Cole, get off that show. Oh, Tom Murphy, the regular man. I said, get off that show. He was like, what? He said, that's Ed. That's crazy. <laughs> So I was like, what's wrong with that? He said, get off that show. <laughs> so he told me, you know, he said, this is good. So I'm like, the clan, clan. It's like, oh, he means clan, clan. He's like, yes, clan, clan. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, here it is. Parties, here it is. I'll, I'll send it to you. If I ever claim it, I, a man, by my will, move this case through this federal court by way of right secured and protected to a man by the Bill of Rights United States Constitution. Articles one, seven, nine, and ten, and under the common law of the land. There you go. That's how I. That's how I define myself as a claimant. And I, a man by my will, move this case through this federal court by way of right secured and protected to a man by the Bill of Rights, United States Constitution. There you go. And I wrote the respondent, the DHRs, like you folks call them, CPS. One is a federal agent. Two is a state agency. There you go. And the jurisdiction was simple. The parties are diverse. There exists a controversy between the parties. Number three, the value of the controversy exceeds $20. Number four, the power of a court can provide the restoration of rights to man. Five, I can move a court and order monetary compensation for damages. There you go. Venue, courthouses within close proximity to the defendants. And then the matter of controversy, forgery. The DHL ordered a forged instrument which is interfering my rights. See exhibit C. And then the order. As the DHR moves in bad faith, I as a man believe that in order to settle this case, it is necessary and proper for I a man to be made whole and complete that the sum of three hundred gazillion dollars reflects the amount of time for every second that my rights have been interfered with to date. As the above stated sum is owed, payable, and due forthwith, as to be paid in the full within twenty one days after the wrongdoers have been served their summons, suit and order to prevent further damaging damages from accruing. And I wrote down, I will affirm and verify in open court that all the hearing above be true. 
because only man can affirm and verify an open court. An attorney can't. That's my whole. I just read my lawsuit. That's my whole lawsuit for three hundred million gazillion dollars. I just read my lawsuit. Ridiculous. <laughs> That's how simple a lawsuit is. It's none of the stuff that you guys are doing. It, when you guys see a lawyer's stuff, you can't like the way lawyers do because they're filing complaints and they're trying to convince somebody to listen to their whiny, complaining nonsense. Like I say to people, it's like winning the lottery lottery out there. If you guys play, have the Powerball or something out there, you have the winning lottery ticket. You have a claim that you have the ticket. You go down to the lottery board and you say, I want to cash this ticket in. I have a claim ticket. I'm on it. And they're going to look at it, give you your money, and it's done. That's all I want to do with mine. I have a claim. I want them to take a look at it, give me my money, and I'm done. Now, when you have a complaint, like I said, with the lottery, it's like saying, uh, say, like, if some black lady says, uh, you know, only white guys from Kansas seem to be winning the lottery, you know, and these white Protestant guys, you know, blue-eyed, blonde-haired guys, so they're, and they're all picking it out of the machines, they're picking it for them, you know, these machines are prejudiced against me. That's a complaint. So I said, it would be like some black lady who's in a wheelchair, who's Hindi, who's gay, you know, that would be a Title uh, 42, 1983 civil rights complaint, and she would be complaining that the lottery system is set up that only white men win. So that's a complaint. A complaint is ridiculous. So when your complaints get dismissed for failing to state a claim, that's right, because you didn't state a claim. You stated you made a complaint. So when you fail to state a claim, which, you know, of course you fail to state a claim, you file a complaint. You didn't file a claim. So file a claim. They're telling you right up there, in front. You, you, you stated, you know, you, you made it, you know, you stated it was a claim which cannot be granted. It's like, oh, you got to be kidding me. Of course I didn't make a claim. I filed a complaint. Because if you had the winning lottery ticket, you'd be making a claim. You wouldn't be complaining that you didn't have the winning lottery ticket. You'd be making a claim that you do. A claim is very fast and quick. A complaint could take forever. A complaint could be appealed. Oh, complaints go on forever. It's ridiculous. I'm not making a complaint. There's no, it's like I said, when you read the Seventh Amendment of the Constitution, it says there is no appeal in any U.S. court. So you can't take my, my claim and you lose, and you can't bring it up to the United States Court of Appeals. You can't bring it up to the United States Supreme Court. It's done. You know, they, they don't have the right to overturn what a jury decides. So, um, yeah, I know, I know that man, uh, you know, if he wants to send me his stuff, that's fine. He drives a track the trailer. I recognize his voice. <laughs> He's talked to me a few times. Yeah, that was Dean. I sent you his email. I just sent you both each other's contact information. Yeah, but you see how simple I am? And you see, like I said, and all these other people that you have on your calls, they usually, they, they talk. To, and they, 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 they try to make you guys fill out all the foul, like statutory codes and, and uh, uh, Supreme Court rulings. You know, I'm like, I don't care what, what somebody, Hale versus Eagles, 1902. You know, Hale might have stuck his tongue out of the judge. Everybody has their own way, you know. We learn um, from everybody. Well, I'm saying the judge, the, the Hale, like, say, Hale versus Eagles, a simple one. Say, so what time kind of Mr. Hale gave the judge the finger? You know, I would not yeah. You know, so maybe that's why he ruled against them. Maybe he didn't like the way he was dressed that day in court. So maybe that's why he ruled against them. Or maybe Mr. Hinkle went to school with the judge. Maybe that's why he ruled for Mr. Hinkle. You know, it's like, I, I, I don't I don't care. You know, I, I don't care. You know, to me, that, that was then, this is now. You know, I don't care what people did years ago, 100 years ago. That's not my case. My case is this. I'm making a claim. Does anybody want to claim that my claim is a false claim? Yes and no. Did you or did you not do this to me? Yes and no. And you say, no, I didn't do it. Great. Let's get this before a jury then on day 22. And that's it. Let's get this over with, man. It's just in the lottery. You know, I just want my money and I want it now. You know, does anybody want to claim that there's been more than one lottery ticket cashed, uh, paid out this, you know, on this, you know, on this lottery? No, there's only one. Okay, I got the one. And I'm like, okay, then now just give me my money. I'm not going to sit around 20, 30 years you to investigate it and appeal it and no just give me my money I got a claim and if I'm lying you come back and to me you know but you make your claim and you say oh well it's over you pay the guy and it's done you know you don't drag court on for six months a year two years you, you do it in 21 days so um, long <coughs> does anybody have any questions that answer do you think of I don't think so anybody have a question press star eight or just type it into the chat. <coughs> yeah, 
Yeah, because like I said, um, um, do, well, do you have any questions, Anna? Who are you thinking of? Me? Yeah. Oh, no, I was hoping we'd get a lot more people on to share their experiences, although I do like listening to you. Okay. Um, but, yeah, like, uh, somebody was asking here, um, let me see here. Um, uh, isn't there an issue with that for case? How did they do this? Oh, PayPart wanted to know how did they endorse the money order, if they endorsed it at all. So, but did you get a copy of that money order back? or? Well, like I said, whenever, whenever uh, you file something in federal court, they put the check or the, uh, on the PACER website so that you could see that they took it and they gave me a receipt for it. They yeah, but can it. you see front and back? Can you see uh, the endorsement? No, as I said at the beginning, they just um, they um, just gave me the front. Like I said, if I go to the United States Post Office and I say to them, I'm going to need a PDF of the front and the back of that check I'm sure, uh, of that money, or I'm sure they get it for me. Don't be so one. sure. Don't be so sure. <laughs> oh. You might be surprised. Like I said, I, I actually, uh, like I said, you can see it clearly on PACER that I wrote the word federal court on the money order. So I just I used that as an exhibit. Federal court. Am I in a federal court? I must be because somebody took my check and cashed it because they gave me a receipt for $350 that they cashed it. So that's as far as I'm concerned. You know, that, that's my proof is PACER. I just, I already copied, I already took it off the website. You know, I already took scan. You know, I already uh, downloaded it. All right. So what you're saying is you don't care how they endorsed it, right? Because I see federal court. I wrote federal court on the face of it. As far as I'm concerned, I'm in a federal court. And they said, No, no, no. You're in a United States district court. They said, No, I'm a federal court because I paid three hundred dollars to be here. And on the U.S. Court that gov website, it says on the very first sentence on the website, all federal courts are Article Three courts under the Constitution. So I'm in an Article Three court. Because it says right here on your website, and as that's what I said to the marshals in 2013. I said this isn't some ancient stuff from 1938. This isn't some nonsense from 1913. This isn't 1776 Yankee Doodle nonsense. I said I'm pulling it off the U.S. Marshals website. I'm pulling it off the U.S. Courts website. The U.S. Courts website, not Freeman of Montana website. The U.S. Courts website. I said, so you're telling me the U.S. Court.gov is lying in the very first sentence and saying all federal courts are Article Three courts under the Constitution? Because there's a difference between a federal court and a bankruptcy court and a admiralty court. So is federal. that on their website? It's on their website. It's on the very first page, on the very first sentence, very first paragraph. So I showed the marshal. He's like, holy cow, you're right. I said, look, how many different courts are in the district court? He's like, seven. I said, there you go. I printed it off your website. There's a bankruptcy court. There's like a, um, uh, you know, criminal courts you have there. A, what you know, website I, did you get that information from? I want to go look right now. It was www.uscourts.gov or, or dot org. U.S. Courts. Yep. Yeah, just U.S. Courts. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, okay. United States Courts. What do you do? Dot gov. It's dot gov. Yeah. All right, is it blue? Yeah. Okay, that's it. So it'll just say like the federal courts, say all federal courts are wrong. United States courts, there's no, no flag there. <laughs> they, do, they do have the, uh, the olive branch. The United Nations insignia is like behind the page. There's yeah. stars and there's like par a partial visual of, a, of an olive branch. You know how it goes around in a circle around the caged earth? Right, right, right. Yeah. Their logo, the United Nations. Yeah, Isn't that clicked, interesting? Yeah, I just clicked on federal courts. I think that's important. Federal okay. courts. And where does it say, U.S. courts are an independent national judiciary providing fair and impartial justice within the jurisdiction conferred by the Constitution and Congress. As an equal branch of government, the federal judiciary preserves and enhances its core values as the courts meet changing national and local needs. Yeah, I'm clicking on a federal courts in the America. Or, and let's see here. Where did it say that? I think it was on the district courts. You had to keep on clicking until you, until you get to it. Oh, federal courts established? What kind of case? Where do you see that district? Uh, 
Let's see here. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to figure it out. Rules and policies, federal courts, judges and judgeships. Yeah. Statistics, forms, fees, court records, educational resources, news, court locator, your court services. I try to remember what the, honestly, those guys, those Marshall guys, because I printed it, I think it was the 16th. I'm trying to see where I found it, where I got. Yeah, where it said the Article Three Courts. Yes, yeah, I'm saying. That's what I'm going to try to find for you guys real quick here. Because like I said, I, that's what we're I said. we got the Supreme Court of the U.S., the U.S. Court of Appeals, U.S. District Courts, U.S. Bankruptcy Courts, U.S. Courts of Special Jurisdiction, Structure and function of the federal judiciary. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. Different uh, headings. Oh yeah, they have a whole bunch of different uh, checks and balances. Constitution. I'm trying to remember if I found it under uh, uh, the differences between federal and state courts. Let me see. Jurisdiction of federal courts. Yeah, I didn't know I was going to be on. So I would. I don't have all this paperwork sitting here ready for you. All right. Okay. Uh, yeah. Try to find where it. Um. Because I'm trying to remember what day I went down there. I just put it in their search engine. Um. So I put Article Three. And it came. It says federal courts. Uh. Hmm. Oh, I think I have a weather fault in it. Oh, my goodness. It's, it says here, comparing federal and state courts. Yeah. The federal court system, the state court system, the structure. Article 3 of the Constitution invests the judicial power of the United States in the federal court system. Right here, the third branch may... See, the conference is concerned in the draft and may include an Article Three court's ability to fashion an effective remedy. <laughs> well, it says it in several places here. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I'm trying to find where I brought, where I brought it down for him. I actually printed it out. It should be easy for me to find because it's nice and pretty for the link. But yeah, you're probably on the right page. I'm not on the computer right now. But, yeah. Well, I just went into their little search box there and wrote in Article Three. Right, it says federal courts. It doesn't say United States District Courts, Federal Courts. There's a huge difference, you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh, it says federal courts. Right, so when every, so don't ever let them trick you into saying, because like I said, my dad just died not okay, long ago. Okay, but I, I don't see where it says Article 3 here, though. Uh, yeah. Okay. How were the federal courts established? What kind of cases do they hear? What is the difference between state and federal courts? These might be some of the questions you are asking, blah, blah, blah. Our founding fathers understood the need for an independent judiciary. <laughs> that's what they're probably rolling over in their grave. Which okay, was created under Article Three of the United States Constitution. The judicial branch is one of the three separate state branches of the federal government. The other two are the legislative and executive, blah, blah, blah. If you would like to learn more about federal judiciary and how the courts work, take a few minutes to visit the links below. Okay. See, that's what I'm saying. Uh, whatever, wherever it was, like, it, was on, it was on that website, and it just said federal courts or Article Three courts uh, establishment of the Constitution. And uh, I showed him it. I said, thank God. I said, it's on your U.S. Courts.gov website. That it's not some free man of Montana website. I said, because this is your website. I said, so I throw this at these people, saying it's a federal court, not a United States District Court. I said, because every time you say United States District Court, that, uh, that was like created like in 1938 or something like that. I said, that's a new creation, and it's administrative, and it does, you know, like U.S. citizens and uh, persons like Coca-Cola can sue there. So I said, in the common law court, Coca-Cola can't sue in the common law court because only man has rights. You know, Coca-Cola has duties and privileges, and they're chartered. I said, a man can move the common law. Coca-Cola can't. Coca-Cola has to appear in a code court because they were established based on some sort of codes. I said, I wasn't created under a code. And that's why I said to them, I said, look, I said, a code, I said, the, I said like I said, the marshal's office, he didn't know. But I said, do you actually know where the codification of the codes come from? I said, 
said, what branch of the government codifies the public law? And he was like, I don't know. I said, well, no branch of the government codifies public law. I said, it's a private publishing co corporation called Thompson's out of Canada. They come down and they read the public law. They unroll the public law in a Library of Congress hall, and they interpret the public law, and they codify it. They create a code out of it. So, now, if they're misinterpreting the public law, what am I going to do? Sue Thompson's, the publishing company who, who actually creates the United States Code? I said, so that's where our codes come from. A publishing company comes down from Canada, goes to the Library of Congress, opens up their vault, rolls out the parchment paper that all the congressmen signed, that's the public law, and they read it. And they interpret it, and they make our code for us. Isn't that lovely? I said, so I'm going to hope that some Canadian guy got it right. I said, this is ridiculous. I don't move on the code, but Coca-Cola and Pepsi has to. Not me. So if they try to move a code before you, you tell me, you know what, that's a code. You know what, you bring the law before the court. Because you can only move it if the law is before the court, not a code. Bring the law. Good luck with that. Gee, good luck bringing the law before the court. Because what you're bringing is a code that was written by Thompson, the publishing company. They codify the public law. So I said, why in God's name would I want to operate under a code <laughs> that some Canadian guy wrote? What happened to the Canadian guy said, ah, let's, let's make a, a typo here. Let's put an extra comma or a period or a, uh, let's, put, let's put this in uppercase and lowercase. Let's just mess with people. What, what am I going to do, sue, sue a publishing company in Canada? And that's ridiculous. So if you want to be controlled by a code world, you just go right ahead. I'm just, I just stand in common law all the time. And I said, well, once we turn into a code world, I told the marshals, I said, oh, well, I said, I'll be a good little code citizen. And uh, I said, the rest of my family lives in Germany and France. No, they're not all sitting in jail. They're not in a FEMA camp over there. They're doing fine. I said, I'll do fine over here, too. I can live in a code world. I said, I'm a good guy. I said, I just like living in a common law country. And I said, I'm going to do my best to keep it common law. So, like I said, it's always best to use their websites. So, use the U.S. court's websites. Because it says federal, federal, federal. Like I said, my dad just died. His name is Rudolph Carl Lentz. My name is Carl Rudolph Lentz. Just because the names kind of sound the same and kind of the words are kind of arranged in kind of a similar manner. We're two totally different persons. I can't be held liable for his nonsense and he can't be held liable for my nonsense. So, you can't possibly tell me the federal court and the United States District Court are the same person. That's ridiculous. The federal court has a whole bunch of different rules that it, it was established under the Article 3 of the Constitution. The United States District Courts were created in 1938. So, what, what are we talking about here, people? There's two different, like, that's my great-great-grandpappy named Federal Court. You know, I'm the son, I'm the United States District Court, I'm the great-great-grandson of Federal Court, but we're not the same person. We're not the same entity. So, don't try to tell me you're the same and you move by the same rules. You don't. One moves under code, and one moves under the Article Three of the Constitution. Moves under the rules of the Constitution. So a private court does not have to give you any constitutional rights. When you walk in the United States District Court, they can say, what constitutional rights? This, you're in the wrong court. They're not going to tell you they're in the wrong court. They're going to say, you ain't got no constitutional rights. What are you talking about? You got a code claim? You want to make a claim? You want to make a, a civil rights complaint under a code? That will hear. But uh, it's like I said, they didn't know what to do. They said, you're making a claim. They're like, yeah. They say, we don't know what buttons to hit on our computer. We don't have, like, buttons on our computer for claims. We don't have buttons on our computer for complaints. That's exactly that I, I tape recorded that man, William Falk, and we took the plug of the courts off. He says, I have to put you under Title 42. He says, there's no other title that you fit under. I said, I don't want to be codified under some code that some Canadian company created. It's a Canadian company created that title code number. I said, well, it's like, well, that's all we, that's software we have on this computer. You, we have to put you in under Title 42 somewhere. I said, that's ridiculous. Keep me in the, keep me in the federal court. I said, don't try to get me in to go into a United States District Court. It won't work because it, that's a complaint side of the court. I'm filing out a claim side of the court. He said, well, I don't know what to do. I said, I said, sir, the best thing to do then is to do nothing. <laughs> I said, you don't know what to do. Just let the defendants answer my claim. If they don't answer it, you know, then uh, I'll tell you just to sign the orders and send it back to me. I said, it's just a claim, sir. It's, it's not a complaint. So, like I said, I, I threw the CD to the uh, U.S. Marshals. I said, there's like 30, 40 phone calls on here to the district court. 
I said, and I recorded it, so you better believe I was nicer than pie to these people. I said, I was nice to these women, I was nice to these men. I said, because, I said to the marshals, I said, if you know you're being recorded, you're going to be super nice and polite, right? He's like, well, absolutely. I said, well, I was super nice and polite. Because I knew I was being recorded, because I was recording it. And I want to be able to use this as evidence against them. So, of course, when I throw it in front of the jury, I want the jury to say, oh, he's a nice man. He speaks nice and nice to these court people. He's not a terrorist. He's nice and polite. I understand what this man is trying to say. So I put everything on recording. So the, <laughs> the marshal kind of just laughed. They said, oh, you're, like, you're too funny. You got like all your angles covered. I said, you better believe it. I said, you're suing him for a gazillion dollars and you're going after a state and the government. I said, you better believe you better, you better, you know, better know what you're doing. So you don't waste your time. So it should be interesting, like I said, in the next couple of weeks, seeing how they're going to handle uh, sending back the orders. You know, because that's what's great about that's what's great about dealing with a federal court is if you get an order for three hundred gazillion dollars, the U.S. Marshals will go carry it out for you. If you get an order in a county court or a state court, you got to figure out how you're going to collect the judgment. You could file like a, a writ of debt and, and try to go get a writ of attachment and try to go get the sheriff's department to go carry it out for you. But uh, with with a federal court, it's great. You just hand it over to the federal marshals and they'll go carry it out for you. You don't have to try to figure out once a, a judgment comes from a, a federal court. They already have a, a way to execute the orders. Marshals will go out and do it for you. So, uh, you know, like I said, the, uh, the only other thing that everybody makes a mistake with, uh, I heard some other lady doing yesterday, some Janet Marie lady. She got arrested the other day. I don't know if you know Janet Marie. She does like... I love her. Yeah, she, she does community call like 2009. Well, she tried to... Um, she uh, got stopped by a young policeman about uh, two weeks ago, and she did this conditionally accept your offer to bond, proof of proof of claim that our uh, secured party credit uh, to the cops, so the cop <laughs> was just totally bamboozled, had no idea where she's coming from, so just let it go. Well, a week later, he said, ah, I'm going to fix this lady's wagon. So he followed us. She's, she's about, I guess she's about your age, and uh, yeah, she lives out there in California, too, and uh, so uh, the guy stopped her a week later. So she tried to, I conditionally accept you all, they give you my driver's license, blah, blah, blah. She only rolled down the window a little bit. So then two seconds later, she said there was like 10 cops around her. They, uh, oh she, uh, yeah, she, she called up Tom, and Tom tried to call me so we'd be witnesses to this lady, you know, doing his conditional acceptance and stuff with the cops. So uh, Tom, uh, there's two people that actually recorded it. As they busted in her driver's window and dragged her out of a car. She's no way. She was in a street. They were like, holy cow. You know, you, you cops are brutal. So they dragged her and they had her in jail for uh, a day. And then Tom ran up there. Uh, oh, yeah. Tom ran up there with a, um, uh, trying to move it over to the common law side. You know, he, uh, he had some paperwork that you know, me and him always do. But I do it in one page. He does it in nine pages. But uh, at least when she got to an arraignment, the, the magistrate said, yes, you know, Tom did bring the paperwork up here. So Tom went there to bail her out and get her out. That reclamated guy, that Tom Murphy guy. So people say that Tom Murphy, you know, it goes off a little bit on his Clean Water Act. You know, well, if he's still a good guy, he'll still come and help you if you're there. You know, he'll run to court and hand paperwork into you. I don't know if people who do that, but he's a real good guy. So, uh, yeah, but when she was on her show, and she was still making mistakes. And she was saying, well, I'm going to file a, uh, a counter uh, complaint against these people. I said, no, you're going to file a claim against their complaint. And I said, your claim is going to go on top of their complaint, so you're going to go first. I said, because uh, you're going to file a claim that they violated your rights, they interfered with your rights to travel, you're going to make a million dollar claim for all kinds of broken windows and all kinds of nonsense. I said, you're going to make a claim, and they have to hear your claim first before they can hear a complaint. So, uh, so once you get it filed with the prosecutor, I said, they'll probably try to work on towards some sort of a settlement. If you know how you have to do your paperwork, I said, but you don't file a cross complaint against the fiction and law. I said, because then it reduces your status to a fiction and law. So you don't want to file a counterclaim or a cross claim or a, a counter complaint. You don't want to do any of this cross nonsense. Because you want to leave them in their ridiculous code world, and you want to file an original claim in your common law court. I said you could you could present it to the same judge. He's supposed to wear the same. You know, he's supposed to be able to change hats. You know, at a at a drop of a you know you know a drop of a hat. He's supposed to be able to shift courts. And 
say, well, I have a common law claim here in front of me. This lady's claiming that this, this, this lady, you know, anybody here from the other side is going to make a claim, you know, deny this woman's claim that they... I got a couple of questions here for you if you want to take them. Yeah, go ahead. I love questions. <laughs> go ahead, guest 41. Did you have a question for Carl? You've been unmuted. Perhaps you have to unmute your phone. Yeah, hello. Hi. Uh, I was wondering, uh, where could I find his uh, lawsuit page that he sent in that was so simple? Well, uh, what's the... Uh, I, I don't want to walk towards the computer. I'll just uh, type in my email address, and uh, you could just... Um, yeah, because like I said, my uh, my uh, fair warning, I, g I give everybody fair warning before you pop hey, Don't I have it on the website? I didn't see it up there. Yeah, I love uh, Go to myprivateaudio.com, go to the guest speakers page, and then click on Carl. Lent. Carl. Yeah, that's a, that's a four-page one. I, I got a one-page one. That yeah, that's what I wanted, that one-page one. Oh, okay. Yeah, because then what I do too is what you do, what you have to do though, before you file a lawsuit, you have to do a fair warning. So you give them a, a six six lines in your fair warning, and um, you know, I'll, I'll find it real quick. But ask if you got another question, ask, and I'll find it real quick for you with a fair warning. The fair warning is so simple, it's scary. But first, but you want me to put your email address in the chat? Yeah, I put it up there. Uh -huh. Oh, of course, that's only for um, talk to people. That's all. I've got hundred different email addresses. Which one do you want on here? Oh, the one I typed on there, kldirttv2 at gmail.com. Oh, did you do it? Oh, okay. Oh, what I is see. it now? Yeah. KL. Okay. K -L. K -L. Yeah. K is in direct. Carl. L is in Lens. Direct. Mm -hmm. B2. B2 at gmail.com. Okay. Because, like I said, here it is. I appreciate it. I'd like to see that fair warning deal, too. Yeah, the fair I'd like to do that, because these guys down here in Amarillo, Texas, they're crooked. Well, here you go. I'll take you to... Oh, the judge, the clerks, none of them want to hear nothing. I mean, you can go in there and try to file anything on them. They don't want to accept anything. Yeah, because if you look back in the 1990s, especially since you're in Amarillo, you could read probably in the local newspapers that uh, free men of, uh, like, Montana people were flooding the Texas courts with liens on the court personnel. So that's why they're very hesitant to do anything for you folks anymore, because they're just like, what we dealt with you guys 15, 20 years ago, we're done. We're done. So, like I said, the simple thing, the fair warning thing, I give everybody. Because, like I said, it's one. It's just simple. I'll read it real quick, because it's simple. I and then you make your name. Gave no entity the right to administrate my property. So it's like, I, whatever your name is, Bob Johnson, gave no entity, you know, known as the DHR, the right to administrate my property. So little old ladies like this, then they're trying to get their grandkids back from like CPS. So this is how I sent it to some lady. But you could use it for a car, you could use it for a tow truck, you know, tow your car away, you can do it for anything. You just say, I, right, Bob Johnson, gave no entity the right to administrate my property. Number two, I say that you know, Baby Johnson is my property. This is what I was doing with little old ladies. I say that blank is my property. Number three, I say that no man or woman will make a claim saying my claim is untrue. Number four, I want my property returned to me. There you go. Number five, said properties to be totally under my control, post haste, you know, within three days, whatever time limit you want to give them. And then number six, it just says I will charge the lawful holder of said property X amount of dollars for every, you know, whatever you want to do, every minute, every day, said property is not returned, starting on the 22nd day after they've received this summons and this suit, uh, you know, see attached claim. So it's simple. You just make it simple. You just say, I give nobody the right to administrate my property. Number two, I say that my property. Number three, nobody, no man or woman is going to come and open court and claim that my claim is untrue. Four, I want my property returned to me. Five, I want it done in like two days or less. And six, I'm going to start charging you money. 20, because you, you're supposed to give me 21 days to answer a lawsuit. So on day 22, I'm going to start charging you because within that 21 days, it, they, it gives them the opportunity to try to make a settlement if you want a private side. And the 21 so days gives them the time to make a settlement. Right. It gives them, it gives them you know, time to make a settlement if you want a private side. So then day 22, you're going to start charging them. Not a district court. And you're going to move it, you're going to move it before a, a, a trial by jury. And you're going to get you back. 
Well, I mean, they get tough down here. They're rough. I mean, they won't accept any paperwork or anything. I mean, that you can hardly even... That's why you can't believe nothing that these guys say, you know? Well, that's why you got to make it incredibly simple. You get, you can, yeah, I've seen some nonsense that some man down there is being held in jail. I forgot what his name was. Everybody on these talk shows know who this man is. And I saw this ridiculous nonsense. And I read the, what the Attorney General of Texas said this was, and the, and the federal judge said, you know, I, I read this gibberish. It took me forever to read this gibberish. And, you know, this is just all nonsense. Yeah. You know, some, some big heavy guy who's starting a church down there, and now they're thinking about deporting him back to Canada. He's got a short name. Everybody on his book knows who, who he is. Talking about Robert Fox? That's it. That's yeah. him. Yeah. So I read the Put it the chat. <laughs> yeah, I, read, I read his whole case. I mean, I read all the stuff the Patriots sent in for him, and oh my God. When the, when, when, you, when the district court and the attorney general says it's gibberish, believe me, it's gibberish. He, he could have done it in one page. Yeah. There's no uh, there's no reason to write 800 pages. Just write one page. Yeah, just write one page, like you said. Who's I'd got like to, to see that one page. I'm, I'll go to your e email site and get that off of there. Right, it's on there. Right, because because, his, because uh, you can just uh, send me an email. I'll, I'll attach it and send it to you. But what I'm saying is your body is your property. So who's got the right to touch your body? Who's got the right to administrate my property without my consent, including my body? Yeah. You know, tell me I violated a code. Who wrote the code? Are you kidding me? Some Canadian company called Thompson's codified the public law, and you're saying because Thompson said that this is what the law is, is Thompson's going to come before court and swear that that's exactly what the public law says? I don't think so. So who, who said that and you don't have no right to administrate because rights are uh, reserved to man. Rights are to a government. What, governments don't have rights. They have a duty and obligation. Privileges. They don't protect have rights. Rights. Right. They're also to protect us, uphold our rights. But right. they don't do it. They never do it. But what I'm saying is because it, it, it to me is like I said, when you write one page, you could keep in within your rights. Once you start going more than one sentence, two sentences long, I'm serious, you're going to make a mistake. The shorter you can make it, the quicker. Say, I have a man, I have rights, I have rights that you're protect me by the Constitution. That's how I define you, that's me. That's, that's all my whole entire lawsuit, that's all I am. I'm a man, I have rights, and my rights are secured and protected by the Constitution. Period. I'm done. I appreciate Don't. you, buddy. All right, no sense. You're a smart man. Well, keep I need all the smart people I can get on my side down here in this place. They're, they are crooked as hell. Well, you just got to stay away from this Yahweh stuff. You got to stay well, away they, from they hit me up on this damn ticket, you know, and then they took and beat the shit out of me because I called him a liar. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm a crippled guy. Yeah. Well, I, I, I got a bad back. They, well, they beat me up, and then they wrenched my neck, and uh, now I have neck problems over this damn deal. And I've tried to do everything I can to explain it to them. You know, I didn't do anything wrong. One officer said, no, the light was green. The other officer said, no, it was red. They couldn't make up their damn mind. You so know, like, that's, that was, like I said to that poor Janet Marie lady, she started to negotiate or whatever on the side of the highway. Now, I'm not going to conduct this. What cars going to find me 70 miles an hour? Get, 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 take your ticket. You know, that's wonderful. He's like, okay, you're giving me a ticket. That's wonderful. You, you order me to do something, right? Okay, great. Now, if the judge is going to order me to do something, I'm going to want compensation. Anytime a man gets ordered to do something, you can make a claim for compensation. If he orders you to wash your windows or his windows, or if he orders you to call his lawn. Anybody orders you to do anything, only man has rights in this country. If we live in a cold country, we're screwed. They can create all kinds of orders, and we just got to do it like a little robot. But in this country, only a man can make a, a claim against you that they, you did him harm. Now, a government can't make a claim that you did him harm. One, they can't be harmed. They could be injured. They can't make a claim. The government makes criminal complaints against you. They make complaints. They're whining about something. There's no harm. They're yeah. whining about something. I tried to get in there. This, uh, you know, I brought fraud up on the court and stuff, but... Uh Molly, what I'm trying to get this judge out of there, but oh, it's, this is a tough, tough deal down here. I mean, they can just take and beat the shit out of you for no reason. Excuse my language, for yeah. no reason, just because you say no, you're wrong, you're a liar. Yeah, it's so not, they don't like it. It's not fraud on the court. Fraud on the court is more um, 
something like a legalese term of art. What you're saying, what you say is, uh, you defrauded. Defrauded is, is, is the word that normal or man uses. Uh, fraud is the word. Fraud upon, on the court, defrauded the court. Well, you, 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 you man, you're a man and you were defrauded of your rights. Or you, you, you know, you were defrauded of your rights. You know, somebody tricked you into doing something or somebody tricked somebody and, and your property was taken. Because your property are your rights. Because your pro, of course, was it, it, like I said, everybody knows John Locke. Well, everybody should probably knows John Locke who I'm talking about on these calls. John Locke made he said, your property is whatever you, you claim your rights, and nobody can interfere with your rights. Like, you have the right to breathe. You have the right to dream. You can't sell your rights. You can't sell your rights to dream. You can't say to me, hey, Paul, I'll pay you. Hey, give me 50 bucks, and I'll give you my dreams. I was like, that, that's ridiculous. Yeah. You have the right to dream. You have the right to have a heartbeat. You have the right to have a pulse. You have rights, and nobody can interfere with that right. So if somebody's making your pulse race or your heart get high blood pressure or stressing you out, they have no right to do that because that's your body, that's your person, that's your property. They have no right to interfere with your property, or administrate your property. They have no rights to do it. They're a government. They're not supposed to be doing anything against the man. They're supposed to be here for our benefit, not to cause us harm. Yeah, I tell you what, this is a this is a bad place. I mean, I brought it up before the mayor and everybody, you know, the appeals court and all. You get it. I, mean, like I try to get it to the courts and everything, and to the federal courts. Well, we're not accepting this. We're in. Uh, well, you have to, don't you? Well, like I said, it, it, like I said, I make it so simple. Like I said, the marshals. When I, when I left the marshals' offices, like we we could have been swapping uh, uh, chocolate chip cookie recipes. I mean, <laughs> like. <laughs> You make it simple, and you say, look, I'm doing this to protect this. I show them a picture of the world. I said, look, all these blue, almost every country in the world is blue. We're, we're, there's only a couple of orange countries left. I said, if, if uh, somebody doesn't defend this country and the, and the rights to move under the common law, we're all going to be considered guilty until we can prove ourselves innocent like the rest of the world. I said, right now, only man has that right to stand in court and say, who's making Who's going to put me in jail? Like the O.J. Simpson case. Somebody had to stand in court and point across that room and said, I saw O.J. kill her. And as I, like I said, I swear to God, I was the only one like in that big casino in Vegas who was watching the, the verdict being led who was happy that O.J. was found not guilty. I knew he killed his wife. There's no doubt about yeah. it. But in this country, you, there's still a rule of law, not the rule of man. So you still need a person to point across that room. The little old lady could have been there in Brentwood, California, said, I was there that night that O.J. did it. And he'd be going to jail for the rest of his life. Yeah. If he went to jail, I would have been so disappointed. Everybody else would have been cheering up and down. Yeah, he's going to jail. Oh, man, I thought we lived in a common law land. I'm so wrong. Holy cow. You can get thrown in jail without an eyewitness, without a man coming to court, swearing his hand on a Bible, and pointing across the room and saying, I saw that man kill her. If you can just get thrown in jail because of circumstantial evidence, DNA or a videotape or a telephone call and you can go get the electric chair for a videotape. Oh, come on. I want, I want at least one person to stand across that courtroom and swear on a stack of Bible that he saw me do it. Even if OJ had a twin, at least I, want, I know that in this country, the common law still prevails. With the OJ Simpson case was the perfect case that, that Marsha Clark did not have a man or a woman to stand in court, point a thing across the room. Even like I said, thank God all the jury people said after 30 days, a little, little black lady watches the interviews, a little black lady, 56 years old, says after 30 days, we, everybody on the jury, we all knew Marsha Clark had what it took to get a part of one on this guy. She was missing the witness. <laughs> so we all knew it was a waste of time. The other year that she had it, and there was a total waste of time. We were all going to say OJ was not guilty until she could produce somebody in that courtroom to point across the room and said, I've seen that man do it. Because this is a common law country. So it's like, oh, thank God, even that little even that little black 56-year-old jury lady knew that we live in a common law country. I was like, oh, God bless that lady. Uh, no. So you got someone standing up out there, you know? Right, so once you guys start realizing what a common law country really is, and it's right on the federal website, stop reading these these. Uh, these other websites, these Free Men of Montana websites, it's right there in uscourts.gov. That's my roadmap. That's what I'm doing to move this to a federal court. This is how I'm going to get that also forth. This is how I'm going to go up to that box. I throw their own paper at them. I said, it says right here, on the uscourts.gov website, you have to do it. This is, you have to do this. You have, what is your website line? 
So when the Marshall scene, I was using their own website, they're like, huh, that's exactly what that site says. I said, that's right. And you carry out the, the business of the court, right? He's like, yes. Hey, you go. So am I within the law? He says, you're absolutely within the law. And I said, I'm absolutely within my rights, right? You're absolutely within your rights. I'm not doing anything wrong, am I? He's like, absolutely not. Yeah, I, mean, I appreciate all your help that you're giving people out here. I mean, this is just God sent. This is, I hope so. We really need to, people need to stand up and say, hey, quit doing us like this. This is an animal's treatment. I mean, right. I wouldn't treat my dog like that. You know? Right. There's a lot of good guys. It's terrible. I mean, there's a lot of good guys like uh, Billy Thornton. He's a good guy, but he writes too much. Um, he writes um, the law of the case. He writes 50 pages of law of the case. I just say, I say it's, I say it's this way. Who's going to come and say that it's not this way? See, that's my law. I'm bringing the law to the court. This is my law. I say you can't do this to me. Now, who's going to come on the other side and says I can do this to you? Oh, you really think you can? Great, lovely. Let's get a jury and let let the jury decide who's right, me or you. That's it. Not 50 pages of explaining uh, Hale versus Hinkle, Bob versus Benton, you know, U.S. versus Georgia. I don't care. That was them. I don't know what they were doing in that courtroom 100, 200 years ago. I don't really care. Now I know this is my courtroom. You did me wrong. You're saying you didn't do me wrong. Great. Wonderful. Let's get in front of the jury tomorrow. Let's get this over. Yeah. So I don't trust the juries either. I'm sorry, but that's... I've got the doctor even saying that uh, that's there's a claim against them for doing me like that. You know, that uh, they hurt my neck and now my hands are numb because of... Right, but like you I know said, what I mean? Like, like I said, Andrew, like, you said you don't like the jury for what I'm saying when it's against the government. The government realizes that if you're moving into common law, the attorney for the government can't speak. So you're the only one addressing the jury. If they can't produce any facts or evidence or move the court for any summary judgment, they can't do anything to the attorneys. Now, if you want to cite a case, yeah, that's Trinzi versus Pagliaro, 1964, where the United States Supreme Court ruled that an attorney cannot even notice the court, can't hand them any facts, can't hand them present any evidence, can't motion the court, can't ask for judgment, an attorney can't do anything in a common law court. Now, I keep forgetting about that, and I have it posted on the homepage that it's the Richard Cornforce uh, deal. Right. Orange Shifts. On Orange Shifts thing, you got it on, too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'll get off of here to let you guys hit somebody else. I appreciate all the help, buddy, and God bless you people. Thanks for helping me out. I mean, God I need you. all the help I can get. <laughs> and I uh, appreciate you. Bye. Thank Good luck. Thank you so much. Okay, we have Iowa. Hold on, let me get her. Oh, they're gone. <laughs> oh, well. Sorry. It's went on and on too long, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what you we have a tendency to do. <laughs> well, maybe we answered the question that the Iowa, see, that's what I think is happening, too. I think so many people are listening to me now so many times. I think people are starting to get how simple I am. And this is what I told you the first time I talked to you. I said, Angela, really? I said, I could talk for two, three hours, and I'm done. <laughs> Stuff isn't complicated. It's too simple. And I said, I'm just trying to get to the simple man and woman to understand. Well, it's plus you're slow down a little bit. You know, you used to go so damn fast. It was hard to keep up with what you were saying. It's like, oh, my God. I think, slow down. Guys, I think you guys are getting used to me. I think that's the whole trick, too. And, and no, you're like, slowing down a little bit. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. But like I said, I try to just make things so beyond simple that, that the common man or the common woman can just say, oh, my God. I have so many little old ladies who call me right up to me and say, oh, I, I can dance. This is so simple. I send them stuff, and I'm like, yeah, man. They're like, oh, we spent but, tens of dollars and I'm like you don't have to spend tens of thousands of dollars this is a common law country just drag it over to the common law side they're going to kick and scream and try to stop you but you just drag it over and they have to let you do as long as you keep it simple don't use any of their words if you use their words you lose your court and it goes back over to their side don't so you use gonna send me that one pager so I can put it up there and also the notification document or whatever that was you said you had another one page notifying yeah. them? Yeah, right. It's fair warning. You have to give fair warning. Like you fair Google, warning. You give Google a fair warning, and it'll just say that uh, if you honestly really want to sue somebody, you have to give them fair warning to try to settle a matter on a private side at least one more time before you drag them before a jury. So it's fair yeah. warning. 
Yeah, in the quiet title, John calls it, uh, what, notif uh, notification? Or, or, yeah, or, or, I don't like using simple words that they can't possibly say that I'm trying to play attorney because once you're playing pro se, or what notice, kind of notice of intent to sue that one. Mm, that sounds a, that sounds a little complicated. I, I just like it simple. Notice of intent, fair warning. I like it. I'm giving yeah. you that. Uh, this is your last. Shot. <laughs> it's better to say this is your last shot. I can see, see you can tell it. This is your last shot. So uh, I'm, I'm giving you fair warning. You yeah. know, so I, I just like to make it simple. Because as soon as they think that you're trying to play one up, like you think you know you're an attorney, you think you're playing an attorney, you wish you were an attorney kind of thing, they're going to clobber you. So you know what? You make it so freaking simple. I like, uh, And like I said, it was great with the marshals. They were like, you know, well, look, the, the courthouse just really wants to have an assessment of you. They don't know what to think of you. I said, well, what are you going to tell them? He said, well, sir, honestly, after five minutes of talking law, once you started talking law, he said, you lost me. I said, I can't keep up with you. He said, I said, don't feel bad. I said, the FBI man down the road, I said, I had a conversation with him a couple of months ago, and he uh, could only keep up with me for about 10 minutes, and he went to a fancy law school like Harvard Yale. He says, oh, you tell him about the man on Franklin Street? I said, yeah. I said, I don't remember his name. I said, but he could only keep up with me after 10 minutes. Of course, I just went so fast. He says, he says yeah, you know the common law like the back of your hand. I said, it was simple. I said, so simple. I said, there's only a couple of steps. There's, there's only like six, seven steps, and you're done. I said, this isn't rocket science. I said, this is how your grandpappy lived. I said, this is how my dad and his grandfather, and my grandfather lived. They didn't speak read or write English. They can move through court in, in 20 minutes. They, 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 they didn't know anything about a code. There wasn't codes around back then for these people. How did, they, how did the country exist before the codes started coming out in 1938? How did they exist? I said, because law was simple. Did you do something wrong? The man had to appear in court and testify against you. The plaintiff must appear. It's an ancient common law thing that's been around for thousands and thousands of years. Because if you point a finger and you said he did me wrong, and you bear false witness against our neighbor, you died. You know, it was, it, was, it was a death sentence. So that's why nobody was crazy enough to file false claims or frivolous claims. Nobody was crazy enough to do that because whatever punishment you wanted for the defendant, the defendant got to do it to you if you lost. So bringing to somebody in court was a really dangerous thing to do for thousands of years. I said, so common law is incredibly simple. I said, so that's how you beat the government all the time, because the government needs to have the plaintiff appear. Now, the prosecutor is appearing for the plaintiff, but the guy who's making a complaint, well, the plaintiff, again, it's a complaint, not a claim. See, so like I said, you, I don't even bother answering. When somebody's complaining, it's like, say, like a wife complaining or a husband complaining. You just say, you know what, that's, you're complaining again. You know what, I'm not even going to answer that. I, I'm not dealing with this. It's a complaint. you got a claim, state your claim. You know, your claim is two sentences long. Prove it. Can you prove it? Yeah, okay. Then I did it or I didn't do it. It's like, okay, I got pictures of you being with this woman next door. You know, the neighbor saw you do it. She said it. Okay, you got a claim? Yeah, okay. Well, okay, you got me busted. That's a claim. The complaint is like, oh, I... You're looking at her again. Yeah, you, you must be messing around with her, aren't you? Like, oh, here we go again. Another complaint. So you guys got to learn the difference between complaints and claims. That's a huge thing. Because claims are done in one page. Just complaints go on forever. It's just like, like I said, it's just exactly what a, a complaint or a plaintiff means. It's a French word for like a nagging old hag. That's what a plaintiff is. You know, you don't call somebody a plaintiff in France, man. They'll smack you. You know, I was like, I'm not a plaintiff. I'm not nagging. You know, that's what it means. Somebody who's nagging. <laughs> and I was like, uh, I'm not a plaintiff. And that's what I told the district court. I said, stop calling me a plaintiff. I'm not nagging. I'm making a claim. Is anybody claiming that uh, my claim is not true? I said, you know, that's all I want to hear, yes or no. I'm not making a complaint. No, I'm not complaining. I'm not a plaintiff. So the whole trick is, like I said, just, just say you're making a claim. I'm a man and I have rights and it's protected and secured by the United States Constitution. There you go. And then, you know, I'm going to make the people hold up their oath of office to the Constitution. Did they or did they not, under Article 6, 2 and 3, swear to uphold the Constitution as the law of the land? That's the next step. After I, like I said, after I demand that they send my orders back, so I feel delivered, which they're not going to do. I said to the marshals, I said, then I'm going to have to hold them to their oath of office. And then when I don't uphold their oath of office, then I'm going to go after their bond. I said, it's going to be that simple. And I showed them the book. I opened up the book and I said, look, under Section 61, public employees, public officials, and bonds. 
And he's like, holy cow, man, you got this one all covered. I said, yes. I said, I'm not stupid. I said, I'm coming for the marshal service. And I said, I'm going to show him the bonds of the Section 61. It says, an official bond is an instrument under seal by which a public officer undertakes to pay a sum of money if he does not faithfully discharge his office, or by which a surety undertakes that if the officer does not do so, the surety will be liable in a penal sum. It says, or more generally, an official bond is the bond of a public officer, and it has to be held that every bond executed by an officer in obedience to the law in which the surety undertakes that he shall discharge a public duty imposed upon him by law is called an official bond. I said, so that's what I'm going to do. I said, I want to ask for their official bonds, if they're bonded. And it just says, the filling of an official bond is generally regarded as a necessary prerequisite to fill the title of an office. It is a condition precedent to the right of a person elected or appointed to be inducted into office. And without such a bond, one is not entitled to the office and may not legally hold or discharge any of the functions of that office. So I said, there you go. I'm going to demand that they put up their bond. If they don't have a bond, they can't officially or legally put up, uh, discharge their functions of that office as a net officers of the court. So all I love that. Right. I, also, I scanned it. I could send you that little one page thing. I pulled it right out of that book. I showed them the book. Please I do. I showed I threw the book on the table. I said, because only three men in Montana people say public performance bonds, hazard bonds. No, there's only three types of bonds. There's official bonds, fidelity bonds, and surety bonds. That's I it. like the free men of Montana. Stop talking about them. I love it too. That's what I told the marshals. I said, I'm guilty of sin. I love that free men of Montana stuff. I said, believe me. I said, I thought these guys were great. I said, my sister had us for one of the Spikes' brother's houses up here on a mountain in Virginia. I said, we had a we had a free man in Montana lady living in a uh, cottage in the back of a house. She was a she was a lovely lady. I said I love that stuff. I said, but I see where they went wrong. They started doing all these crazy checks and side dress and going after the IRS. I, I said I don't, I don't have nothing to do with mine. I, I said I got a wonderful place up here. I don't need nobody's money. I said that's where they went wrong. Is they started going after it for the money instead of doing it for the principal. I said I'm doing it for the principal. I said they did it for the money. I said, if I get some money out of this, well, wonderful. If I don't, big deal. I said, I'm certainly not going to write crazy checks like these guys did and do site drafts and use birth certificates to try to monetize my accounts. And just, you know, I'm not going to do that crazy stuff. They were using uh, the Department of Agriculture's uh, routing numbers to buy all kinds of stuff. I said, that was insane what they were doing. You know, uh, but God bless them. If that's what they thought was the right thing to do to get back at, you know, the government for doing what they were doing to them. If they wanted revenge, that's fine. I don't want revenge. I was going to sue them for a dollar. But the Department uh, the Department of Justice told me not to. He said, nobody's going to take you. They're going to pay you a dollar, and it's going to be done. <laughs> he says, then where are you going to be? I said, oh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, He's but like, then you have your win on the record. Yeah, that's and then a good point. Right, then he could go out after what's later on. But he, like I said, I like what he just said. He says, make it up whopper. He says, well, that, that'll get everybody's attention. Oh, that's what the marshal service said, too. He says, oh, you got everybody's attention, all right. <laughs> that's exactly what he said. So I went down to the marshal service in November, and I and at first I went to the district court local down here in Long Island, and I asked them, can you read my lawsuit? I said, it's simple. Can you just read it? And they were like, no. So I went to the marshal service, and I said to the marshal service, I want you to carry out a couple of writs for me. I got to send them down to Alabama. This, this doesn't make any sense to you. So they read them real quick, and they're like, "Nah, just we, we don't do stuff like this." And they just basically blew me off. So when they got a call to come back down there two months later, it's like, "Well, uh, you guys kind of blew me off two months ago." He's like, "Yeah, well, now you definitely got our attention." <laughs> he says, "Can you please come down here again?" I said, "Oh no, no, you want to talk to me?" He says, "Oh yeah." He said, "You got our attention now with that paperwork." He said, "Somebody in the courthouse read that paperwork, and they know what you're doing. They want us." To you and find out just who you are and like what your goals. What are you trying to do with this? I said, yeah, because with this paperwork, honestly, I said, I can wind up owning the state of Alabama, couldn't I? He said, we need to talk to you now because there needs to be a man who's going to have to come forth on the other side and say they did not do me wrong. Good luck with that. And I can claim anything. I can claim the whole entire state. What are they going to do? How are they going to say that's outrageous? Okay, who's saying it's outrageous? Somebody's going to have to come and say that it's outrageous. And then I'm going to have to get it before a jury. And then the jury's going to tell me I'm outrageous. <laughs> the jury's going to say, hey, look, here's five bucks. <laughs> have a nice day, sir. Trying to claim the whole state? Yeah, you're crazy. But if five dollars worth, here you go.
you're worth five bucks or a million bucks. Whoever knows what the jury decides. But that's the whole trick. You know, uh, you've got to keep it on the common law side. And they realize me, I'm fighting like, you know, an alley cat to try to keep it on the common law side. And they want me to bring it over to the civil rights side. And I don't have civil rights. That's what I told them. I said, civil rights are only for certain protected individuals in society. And I'm not it. It's not a prophylactic remedy for all society's ills. I said, that's Scalia, U.S. versus George in 2006. And they're like, holy cow. You, know, you can do this stuff right off the top of your head. I said, absolutely. <laughs> and so when you're suing somebody for millions of dollars, you better believe you better know this stuff off the top of your head. Because you got to get before the jury and you better be you better be quick. Yeah. That's why I say to everybody, just make it these one-page lawsuits. That way you can get in front of a jury and just keep it quick. Because when you make a, a claim, you can't modify it by one word. You get, and, and, and you get challenged by the man in the black robe or in front of a jury, you have to just keep saying that one sentence like a broken record, because that's what it is. You pressed upon the record your word, and you can't modify it by one word. You can't start changing your claim. Either you did, you know, like I said, discover the South Pole, or you didn't. And they say, well, come on, you maybe you're off by one millimeter. It's like, no, because if you say you're off by one millimeter, well, then you didn't discover the South Pole. They'll say, oh, come on, be reasonable about this. Come on, reasonable, come on. It was 100 degrees below zero. It was snowstorms. You were sick. You were dying. You were starving. Come on, maybe you were off by one millimeter. Maybe your compass froze. Come on, maybe, come on. Just just say maybe. Maybe I was off by one millimeter. As soon as you change your word by one little millimeter, your whole claim falls through and you don't get a penny. And your case gets kicked out of court. So that's the whole trick, too. Don't fall for this lawyer nonsense when they try to say, be reasonable. Don't be reasonable. You make your claim. Your word is your bond. You don't ever alter your claim. You don't change the word. It, 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 you know, that's why I tell everybody, do it in one sentence or less. That way you have too much to say in court. <laughs> you can't possibly make a mistake. You write 800 pages. Of course you, you're not going to be able to remember it and say it under oath affirmation in open court. Nobody's going to read it either. Right, but you have to make your claim under oath affirmation in open court. You have to. I'm saying an 800 page document, nobody's going to read it. Right, because, the, because if you don't, that's what that Richard Cornforth tells you. If you don't make your claim in open court under open affirmation, uh, it could it's a void. It could be considered a void judgment. Somebody could come back 100 years from now and say, but Mr. Lentz or Miss Angela, you did not do it in open court under open affirmation. So that makes it a void judgment. You have to do it in open court under open affirmation. So make it your claim, one sentence. Make it super simple, like I said, like I do. I just say it's so simple. Forgery. The DHR uh, used, uh, uttered a forged instrument which interfered my rights. I can remember that. <laughs> See Exhibit C. You know, I was like, there you go. And the marshals looked at Exhibit C, and they go, this is the contract? I was like, yeah. He's like, this has to do with the uh, uh, grandma and uncle taking in a granddaughter and living in an apartment. What does this have to do with a newborn Downs baby boy in a hospital and uh, what? I said, absolutely. I said, how lazy could these people be? It's a standard form, a standard contract form. I said, do you think they could have at least wrote my name, my wife's name on a blank form, my baby's name on a blank form, uh, made our signatures on a blank form, and signed this deal and stamped it by the clerk of the court? You know, you'd think they would have taken five minutes out to at least make a fake contract. No, they just grabbed somebody else's contract and threw it in the case file. That's how lazy these people are. They just think that you can't ever get it heard in before a court. That's how arrogant they are. Why should we even try to make a contract against you? You know, what court are you going to bring us into? Nobody cares, Mr. Lentz. Nobody's going to care. What are you going to do, sue us in federal court? Huh? We're federal agents. What are you going to do? Nobody's going to listen to you. So, like, holy cow, these people are right. So, like I said, the marshals, like I said, I talked to them for like two hours, and they said, yeah, you're right. You're really up against the wall on this one, ain't you? So you better believe it. I said, uh... You know, so you got to do it methodically. You got to do it one step at a time. I said, now you got to hold them to their oaths of office. I said, then I'll, I'll send that to Don. Thank you. I scanned it. Okay. You love it. It's simple. But, uh, I, sent you, I sent you a couple of emails already with reminders. Okay. That's fine. But send that one because I, I didn't. Oh, that's not a problem. There were yeah. several documents. I don't remember them all. Oh yeah, like I said, I made it, I made it really simple. Like I, I said, you guys have stuff before I uh, filed the lawsuit. So the lawsuit I actually sent was really simple. I sent you like I filed a lawsuit 
like around December 1st. And that, that stuff that you guys got, I think it was like November 18th, 19th, 20th. So it was like, a, you know, you always tighten everything up, you know, like the last week or two before you get ready to send it to the court. So, uh, yeah, like I said, every, you know, it's a lot simpler and like tighter. But has anybody got any questions on their hands or anything? No. Anybody okay. have a question? Speak now or forever hold your peace. We've gone over the two hour mark. I'm going to close the call out. Alrighty. And uh, later on tonight, if you send me those docs, I'll get them up there. All right. What 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 episode is this going to be? This is uh, episode one ninety nine. All right. That's good because somebody asked me what episode did I talk about these documents on. I'll tell them it's on one ninety nine. Yeah, because I also have it posted where your name is on the guest speakers pages. Okay. Then, you know what episodes you've been on. Okay, yeah, like on that one night, like on a uh, talk show one, if you can, put it on there, because a lot of people go to that uh, talk show site. So I know I'm oh, on okay. 189, I know I'm on. So a lot of people listen how I do traffic tickets. And that was, that was like episode 189. Like episode 188 was CPS, you know, the, the family court was like episode 188. Like traffic tickets was like 189. Now this one will be one page claims do any kind of court for any kind of uh, property. Anything you claim is your property, your person is your property. So, like I said, that's what your family called crazy because I said, that's my child, is my property. And he's like, oh, we don't call them property. He said, uh, I looked over my wife and I said, she's my property. And they're like, oh, you know, how, like, they were like, how dare you call your wife your property? You're like, I'm her property. And they were like, oh, that, that's horrible. You know, how, how, we don't we don't talk like that anymore. I was like, uh, she has the she has the exclusive right to enjoyment, and no other man or woman on a planet has that right to use me or touch me without her consent. And the same agreement I have with her that I have the exclusive right to enjoy her, and nobody has the right to touch her without my consent. I said so. No, it works out pretty nice. I said we got married, and it's like one and one now equals one. Now we're enjoined. I said we are property of each other. I said, and that child is our fruit of our labors. We produce that child. He's our property. I'm like, oh, listen to this horrible language. I mean, it's just in these black cells who work with girl banana, you know, saying that we call each other property. <laughs> I said, but she's property to me. Nobody else has the right to use or enjoy it but me. No, that child, that's my property. You know, like, oh, we don't use words like that anymore. I said, well, you could erase them out of your legal books, but in law, that's still my, my property is my right. That is my, I have the right to that child. Nobody else does. So rights and property basically are the same word. So you really mess with people's heads when you say you have, you know, that's your property. And you say that's, that, that's mine by right. So you could say it either way. You say that's mine by right. Or you say that's my property. It, and both are identical in law. But it just makes people go bananas nowadays when you call somebody their property. <laughs> it just makes people real upset. Hold on, somebody here has a question. A, B, C, hold there. Go ahead, A, B, C, D, E, F, 4. Hi, Ian. How you doing? This is Josie Lee. Hi. Glad you made it on. Yes. Hi, Carl. Hey, how you doing? Good. Um, I had a quick question. I'm the one who typed into the chat board before about the jurisdictional challenge. Um, and basically, the question was... Um, uh, I, I was arrested last Monday um, in regards to a dog bite where the police had to come to the home because the hospital called and made a report on it. And I guess they ran my name and they said that there was a warrant for my arrest from the Shano County. Um, and when, when this county um, filed charges on me for a, uh, a DUI, supposedly a DUI, <clears throat> uh, forced me into a plea deal and uh -oh. sent, me, sent me to jail for nine months. I served the time. When wow. I got out, the court case was still under appeal, and I did right. a jurisdictional challenge to them. Right. And this was back in, I was released July 5th, 2011. And okay. A good, and a, good, a good man that Angela brought up before, and this I'm just going to cite him, so he's got a great... Uh, Two, three. It, you, you might not be able to find it on YouTube, but you can go to Google and type yeah. in Richard. Call, I'll type this. Can you, are you not on the chat board? Are you? 
Yes, I am. Okay, it's cause for. And any time the state makes a uh, moves to court and, and creates an order and, and and tells you that it has a judgment passed against you, um, they're all void because nobody came to open court on the altar affirmation and swore that you did it wrong, that you did something wrong. So what you could just say is that you are incompetent in that administrative court because you walk because you do not know code. I'm always incompetent. I'm always, and believe it or not, idiot is a uh, legalese word that just says that I'm not competent to contract in, in an administrative court. So the judge says, so the judge says you, me and my claiming, I say, he says, that he will ask me, are you claiming you're an idiot? I said, absolutely. Bingo, you got it. So he gets, you know, he's like, oh, well, the man knows the law. You know, we can't contract with, a, with an idiot or somebody who's incompetent. So now you have to Google on YouTube. Yeah, Richard Cornsforth. Uh, I'll put his link. Amen. Yeah. For the, I just put the link in the uh, chat on the top. That's the link to his clip on Trinity versus Pagliano. Right. He, he has three hours worth of videos. I mean, it, it, it's really long. I think it's four and a half hours altogether. It's like an hour, hour and a half, and like an hour. Uh, it's really long videos he has, but they're really good. But pay attention to when he gets the Trinity versus Pagliano. Is Pagliaro with an R and an N, and, and, um, yeah. and, and what it's basically saying is that this, thank God, this is a common law country because you can't use this in France. So all you have to say is I was not aware that I had the right to move this before in a common law court or a common law jurisdiction. I was, you know, I was confused. I was incompetent. I, did you have an attorney when you entered that plea? Uh, actually, yes. Yeah. And, and what had happened with with the whole ordeal was she was coming from the same county up to the hearing, which was supposed to be a jury trial. Um, and I had sent in paperwork via email and fax uh, for something, and they never notified me that all the highways were shut down to get up to this county, which is two hours away. And the attorney who was a public defender, lived in, lived in the same county as I do. She never called me and told me. So what happened was when I got there, they immediately brought me into the judge's chambers. The judge ended up um, basically saying to me, if I don't plea, he's going to send me to jail for contempt of court for being late for his jury trial. And I was hysterical. I was yeah. there all by myself. I didn't know what to do. And what happened was... Um, they sent me to jail for nine months. Well, like, what's good is that, what's good about that Mr. Cornsworth thing is he talks about three or four hours and all he talks about is void judgments. That's all he talks about. And he says 99% of judgments rendered in this country are void on their face if somebody did not come before the open court and swear under oath of affirmation that you did wrong. Now, you enter the plea, that's not swearing. Nobody came before the court and swear it swore it on upon the record. Because I said to Angela a while ago, somebody could come back years from now and say, well, Carl never swore in open court under oath of affirmation, you know, before a jury. And that's what I want to do. I want to swear before open. I want to get into an open court. I don't want this to end on a piece of paper. Because they could say, well, that judgment's void. Because does Carl really exist? Does, is there a man really come a lens? You know, did he ever make a physical appearance in Alabama? You know, we've never seen this man. He's in Virginia. You know, just because he sent paperwork doesn't prove that he really exists. He needs to appear in open court and swear under oath of affirmation. So it's basically the same with you. That's why I say to people, listen to Richard Cornsforth. This is stuff that's so he drags on way too long. It's just Cornsforth, not Cornsforth. It's C-O-R-N-F-O-R-T-H. No S, okay. Yeah, I don't know. No, no, no S. Right. Yeah, he's a right, well, that's a tough find. Well, this, this is basically the question. If I did the jurisdictional challenge in July of 2011, they basically sent back paperwork saying that this uh, we do have subject matter, jurisdiction matter over you. Um, your your paperwork is frivolous and poo-pooed. They poo-pooed me right out with the letter. And then yeah. they basically sent me a letter that I owe them $20, not $2,300, but $20, and they were going to put it towards the tax. So when they arrested me on Monday, in order to get out of jail, 
those fines that were paid, it had to be paid up in Shana. So it was a, a, a bail set at, uh, I think it was $2,300. Wow. Yeah. Well, like I said, like I said, a lot. Well, I, I, you listen to my, my older videos, uh, the older things I did on Ashley's show was like 188 or 189, and I made it very simple. I said, whenever you go to an arraignment, all you do is say, may I have a pen of paper, and you just write, is there a claim before the court? See, because you can't speak in an arraignment. If you speak in an arraignment, the judge will say, he could throw the book at you, because he'll say, you stuck his, your tongue at him, or you had an attitude. So I don't say anything to a man in a black robe. Because I don't recognize that he even exists. I just address the court. I write, I write on the top. I say, notice, is there any man uh, making a claim before this court? Is there a uh, claim before this court? Will this claim be verified in this court at this time? So like I said, they have to say that there is a claim before the court. They have to answer you. They have to say, yes, there is a claim, or yes, there is a man. If not, that's why you, you're always moving under the common law. Because mm -hmm. if you answer a code, if they say, well, we picked you up under section 303055 d 6 how do you plead? So plead to what? That dribble? I have no idea what the hell you just said. Oh, well, let me tell you what it means. No, 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 no. I didn't write that code. I can't be helped. It's like, I didn't write that contract. I don't know what you're reading. I don't know how you're interpreting it. You know, that's not my words. Those are your words. You know, don't don't tell me what they mean. And like I explained to early on this call, the public law in this country is written by Congress. It gets sealed, enrolled, and evolved in the Library of Congress. Nobody looks at it. The only people that look at it are the people who write the code book. So the code is written by some Canadians. So if you're yeah. saying that I'm in violation of a code that some Canadians wrote, I'm like, what? This is silly. All, I, all I'm here is the answer to the law. And all the law is in this country is common law. And all the law in this country is that I hurt a man. Is there a man or woman who's going to come forth with a claim that I caused no harm? Yes or no? That's this country. If you get tricked into going into France and answering under codes, well then, like I said, they, they just trick you. Because, like I said, your great-grandparents might not, like mine, didn't speak or read or write English. They didn't get tricked. When they went to court, they knew that there was a claim before the court that they did wrong. And they answered to the wrong. And that was it. It was over in five minutes. It, it didn't go on for, like you said, you know, nine months and appeals. There was none of this nonsense, you know, 40, 50, 60 years ago. None of this nonsense existed. It's just a way for lawyers to make money and to make a huge legal industry to give them something to do, some money to make. Mm -hmm. So what, the whole thing is, like I said, learn what a void judgment is. Say that nobody came into help, and don't let anybody tell you that there's any such thing as a statute of limitations, because statutes of limitations don't apply to man. Uh, man is not bound by latches. You know they're bound because they okay. they bound. So you basically saying I don't have just 30 days to file a claim. That's so ridiculous. What, what they did to me was they came and got me. They supposedly said that they had a warrant for the Shano County and a warrant for Dodge County, but I never saw any of the warrants, and I know on firsthand that the one warrant for the county that I live in, which was for $300 from an attorney, which is a third-party debt collector, there was no signature or stamp from the judge. There was no judge's signature on it. That's what I said to everybody, too. I said, when you ever Almost court. like extortion. They basically right. paid, paid the, the judgment of $2,300 and got me right out. I didn't even go in front of a judge or anything. Okay, look, look, look at it this way. I'm suing the federal court for a gazillion dollars, okay? They handed me two orders. One was like seven pages long. One was nine pages long. You know what I did? I didn't read them. Why? Why bother? Because it's all legalese. I don't speak legalese. So see, this is what I'm saying. You're reading all the stuff that they're writing back to you, and you're trying to figure it out. Me? I don't waste my time. To me, I'm just saying, is this common law? Yes or no? It, there's yeah. nothing in the order that could be handed down except for by a jury. So if I don't see a verdict from a jury, I don't see anything. So like I said, I'd laugh when these guys are sending me orders. I, I, I look at the last page just to see if the edge is actually signed by a man, and it's not. It's all rubber stamped. It's all stamped by the, the signature of the guy or the woman, but I don't, I don't bother reading this stuff in the middle because I'm not going to let it get me upset because it has nothing to do with me as the man. So to me, I say that, look, this is a, why don't we still have a common law country? Use it and and just drag it over to the common law side. And like I said, when you claim, it's going to go above their complaint. So your claim is going to get heard first. So that's how it works in law. 
whatever paperwork goes on last is the first thing heard in court. So they already have a complaint against you. Well, they already got a warrant. They got whatever nonsense. Now you're going to come in and you're going to put a original claim. You're not going to file a counterclaim. You're not going to make a cross complaint. You're going to file an original claim and say, look, they're administering my property without rights. They're trying to tell me what to do and they have no right to do it. And they're going to say, well, we have a right under this code. No, you don't have rights under a code. You have a duty, obligation, or privileges under a code. You don't have rights. Only a man has rights. A code is not rights. A code is not law. So that's what I said, you know, uh, this is so simple, it's scary. And I, and I hope people start to understand what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. That the government comes at you, they have no right to come after you. And if you were to you have to establish that fact. Like I said, my lawsuit is so simple. I, a man, you know, <laughs> claim, you know, I've been harmed. I have rights and those secure and protected by the Constitution. And there you go. And that's it. I'm done. And, it, it, you know, I don't, believe, I don't have to give my name. How many cases do you see, like, anonymous versus anonymous or John Doe versus John Doe? You don't have to give him your name if you don't want to. You just say, I'm a man. You know, and then the jury will come down and the jury will decide the matter. You have the right to move any claim or any complaint or any case against you, uh, you know, when it's a criminal complaint, it's uh, the Sixth Amendment, and when it's a, a civil complaint or a civil claim, the Seventh Amendment. So everybody has the right to a trial by jury. So like I said, you have to bring, like I said, when you listen to Collins Fall, they'll tell you that um, no attorney will appear on the other side. And Clayton Cherry was on Angela's show, and he said the same thing. And this is what I tell people a hundred times. If you go Google New York State, there has not been a foreclosure in New York State in over four years now because Clayton Cherry and his group went before the uh, New York Supreme Court and they said that if any bank wants to try to foreclose on any more people in New York State, the attorneys are going to have to come forward under open affirmation in open court and swear that everything that the bank is saying is true. And every attorney is now going to be held liable for uh, any false claims. If he can't prove it, that, uh, he's going to you know, be disbarred, he's going to be held liable for damages. So then no one has brought forth a claim from a bank for foreclosure in New York State for like three or four years now. Because we'll see once folks start realizing an attorney can't speak in a common law court, they can't do it. They can't bring forth a claim. They can't say anything. Only the plaintiff can say anything. So you can just say the plaintiff never appeared. And rule number one, in common law, the plaintiff must appear. The defendant doesn't have to appear, but the plaintiff must appear. Mm -hmm. No no plaintiff appeared. You know, like I said, uh, I don't know much, how much simpler it can make it, you know, like you said, you got to stop overthinking it. And that's what people are having a problem with. Like, you know, they're reading, actually reading what these courts are sending back to them. And I was like, no, 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 is this common law? No, I, this, no, this start going legalese. I always speak common law. Well, like Rod Clark says, you use your own laws against them. I, yeah, that's what I, that's what I said. I used, uh, well, that's what I say. I used, I used their U.S. codes that I used at uscourts.gov website, and I used their own words against them. Exactly. That's exactly what I did. Yeah. yeah you know, like instead of that. right, like if that man Rod Class says, there is no whatever, 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 whatever anymore. It's like you know what? That's your belief. You know, as far as I'm concerned, the U.S. government just print, made this website this year. You know, January first, and it clearly says that all in federal courts are Article Three courts. So you know, okay, I'm going to hold them to it. So I'm going to put it before them and say, what is it? What does your website say? And they say, oh, we're all Article Three courts. Yeah, what does your federal court website say? Uh, we're all Article Three judges. Like if you go to the United States, uh, if you go to a, a United States District Court website, it says that all the judges there are Article Three judges. So I'm going to hold you to it. They're just going to try to drag you over to the administrative side. They're going to try to drag you to the city. Yeah. And you, you refuse to go. You're like, I'm not going. You know, but like I said, the whole problem with the, with the, the people when they're saying they're not going is because they start talking to the man in a black robe instead of just writing it and putting it on paper. That way you didn't say to anybody in the court. You just write the run the top notice. That means you're noticing the whole entire world. Not judicial notice, not uh, executive speedy notice, just the word notice. Just say notice. Is there any man in this court who's making a claim? It's almost like you could turn around and look in the gallery and say, he, 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 forever speak, you know, speak now, forever hold your peace. Is there any man who's going to make a claim before me in this court? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's what they'll people do at 9 o'clock in the morning. You get called to be at the traffic court at 9 o'clock in the morning. You show up at 9 o'clock in the morning. You stand up and say, 
is there any man who's going to make a claim against me before me today? It's 9 o'clock, and at 9.01, I'm leaving. Is there any man who's making a claim? You make your claim, fall off now, or I will hold your peace. Say three times and leave. And then they'll give you any crap. You can say, look, I was there at 9 o'clock. You summons me to appear at 9 o'clock. Well, we didn't get around to calling you until 11.30. Oh, well, you didn't say that. On your, on your summons, it says for me to appear at 9. I appeared at 9 o'clock. 901, 901, I went home. I called up an open court just like they do. They yell at an open court. They'll, they'll call your name out. They'll say, hey, is your enchanted summons here? Yeah, okay, you know, come forth. You can say, okay, you can just yell forth. That says 9 o'clock. You can just, you, you call forth, say, hey, I'm here to see if anybody's making a claim against my person. Anybody here? No, I'm going home. They just say, hey, I was here, you know, just a, uh, you know, that's, that's, a, that's always a fun thing to do, too. Just make a claim in open court. But like I said, you got to make an original claim. you got to put it with the clerk of the court at least, uh, you know, like uh, at least 10 days before you get to court. You know, so... Letter? Yeah, like a notice. No, everything's got to be just a notice. Everything's just a notice. Okay. Just the word notice across the top. Don't do judicial notice because then that diminishes the capacity of notice and then you're saying that somebody has the right to judge your notice. I don't give anybody the right to judge my notice. You know, who, who are you? The only person who's going to judge my notice is the jury. What am I write jury notice on this? No, I'm just going to write the word notice. Mm -hmm. And notice just means after the whole entire world. And just make it an all lowercase notice. No big, fancy, bold notice and uppercase. Just write lowercase notice. Just notice. Do you, do you sign is it the UCC 1-308 without the per, uh, prejudice? Oh, no. Absolutely not. Uh, when, when any time I get any kind of a ticket like that, I have no problem signing my name. Because to me, uh, I'll just make an original claim against that person immediately if they file the false claim. I always do that. Listen to my second, first to second call, I, I went over exactly how I took it into a, uh, when a policeman gave me the ticket, uh, I actually started the I started to conduct business on the side of the road. My sister said, come on, call. You know, you just just, just take the ticket. I said, oh, what am I doing? Yes, lovely. Give me your tickets, please, as many as you want. So then Monday morning, I went down there, and I handed the prosecuting attorney, and I said, this man's not making a false claim against me because I did not cause any harm or injure anybody. And uh, I want this claim to uh, make it go away. You know, discharge it, dismiss it. You know, let's just, you know, say, you know, you know he, he made a mistake. And then when he read who was the officer was, he's like, holy cow, no, this guy teaches all the recruits the code. No, he, what he wrote must be dead on, and I'll see you for what, 30 days. I said, oh, well, I gave you fair warning, you know, that uh, to take back the tickets, and you wouldn't take them back. But like I said, that's on Angelo's other call, and I went through the whole thing, how I beat him in court. But like said, they never, um, they, the, the prosecutor said he's never lost, and the, the cop said he never lost, and... I just did the old trick when I said, when I made sure, when open court, when it first started, I said, we're here to discuss the fact that I broke the law, right? Yes. And I said, okay, yes. And then I asked the judge, I said, yes. And I said, okay, and you know the difference between, like, legal and lawful, right? He said, oh, absolutely, I'm a judge. I said, okay, then let's get this on. I'll be done in two minutes. You know what, guys, I got to go. Sure, Ange. I hate to cut it short, but uh, we've, I've got to go. My son's waiting for me. Um, it's Jody, I hope that's good for you. And, go, and also listen to the other episodes he was on. The numbers yeah, are okay. on the, the website. If you go to the guest speakers page and click on yeah. Carl Lance's name, it's exactly. 188 and 189. That's what he said. Yeah. 188, 189, and 199. Yeah, this one is 199. All right, and um, somebody's asking real quick, Carl. Uh, would this work in a divorce, a no-fault divorce, would you say, is there a claim before this court? Uh, the only problem with the, it's funny, with a divorce, it's, it's, it's like I said earlier, it's like one and one becomes one, so it's almost like you're suing yourself, it's almost like a, a vicious circle, you know, it's like you're making a claim against yourself, you, you know, uh, um, yeah. So no, you wouldn't yeah, I, do that in a divorce? In a divorce, um, no, because the person is there to testify. <laughs> you do have a man or woman who will have no problem making a claim against you. <laughs> yeah, it's more like when you're up against a government entity, right? It's the First Amendment, right? The, the right to re grievance against the, the government, right? Re grievance against the government. It's the First Amendment, right? You can sue them, and you can say nobody has the right to administer my property. 
but they don't have rights to them and have privileges. So, right, you use the old uh, First Amendment say it's re grievances of the government, of an act of the government. They try to administer a copy with that price, but the government doesn't have rights. It's just that simple. Thank you very much, Carl. I appreciate it. Every time you come on, it's always so interesting. Thank you yes, so much. Uh, I, I, thank you, everybody, for coming on. I love you. I, I hope we can see you again next time. Um, let's see. Go to the website, myprivateaudio.com, and click on the guest speakers page, and uh, you can see some of the docs that uh, Carl has already sent us. Also on the history page, if you go to call history, it, there's a listing of all the different calls and the different people that are on the calls and links to their information. And um, I guess that's it. We'll call it a night. Thank you so much. I love you guys, and I appreciate it. See you again next week. Thanks, Carl. All right, Angela.